too. Welcome, everybody, to a truly Papa Blessed episode of the H3 Podcast. We are joined today by perhaps the most iconic figure in the H3H3 H3 universe. Eight years in the making. None other than Papa John himself <laughs> in the studio. Welcome and thank you. Uh, Welcome. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Ethan. Thank you so, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm frankly, I can't believe I'm sitting sitting across from you right now. <laughs> well, the feelings are mutual, I gotta say. <laughs> yeah. So you, you had mentioned to me that you you had thought of reaching out to me, but Pop, the Papa John uh, board of directors or corporate were not, were not savvy. Yeah, I've I've been wanting to talk with you for about eight years. You're hard to get a hold of, frankly. But really? um, I gotta try to get bit, myself more bit. available. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, I think they're just a little more conservative. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've always thought this would be a lot of fun. I hope I was right <laughs> coming into this. Yeah, you'd be. Right. It's gonna be. Great. It's gonna be a great time. It's gonna be a pizza journey. <laughs> um, well, now that you're you're no longer beholden to corporate, so are you in a way? Is this a big middle finger to them now that we're doing this? <laughs> a big middle finger? No, not at all. I'm I'm probably Papa John's biggest fan. Mm. You know, I'm a even now. I love pizza and I love people and uh, the people at Papa John's. They're the ones that made that company great. You know, you you build 5,000 stores out of a broom closet, and you got to do that with great people. But no, franchisees, I love them. Employees, I love them, and right. um, we, we're we, pulling for them. I'm their biggest fan. So. We love the franchisees. We hate the board of directors. <laughs> Is that right? I, I'll, put, I'll, I'll put the words in your mouth. Or, I mean, I'll, 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 I won't put the words in your mouth, but I'll say it for all of us here, those sons of bitches. Um, are they, but they got to be scared that you're on here now. I mean, you've got documents with pizza... Pie, literally pie charts. You've got a pie chart with a pie on it. Um, I don't know if scared's the right word. Um, I, you know, we we felt like the, some decisions being made the last couple of years were not exactly in the best interest of the system. Mm. Uh, there's nothing that's happened with Papa John's the last 20 or 30 months that uh, wasn't predictable, mm. and it's not been good. Um, with that being said, they're struggling. And um, we're hoping that uh, things get better and they'll pull themselves out of this mess. Do you want to go back? Do you want to be the CEO on the, on the directors? No, I don't want to be CEO. You want and to be back on the board? No, no. Um, let's let it run its course. Let's see what happens. Let's see what's going to happen. I mean, so far it's not been good. Um, the thing that scares me the most is there's nobody on the board or really in uh, leadership that has any pizza experience right the pizza category we heard right about. there's no experience and uh very very dangerous um everybody wants to do pizza everybody thinks they want to be in the pizza business but it's a it's a really a, a different uh animal i mean it's it's tough i mean it's, so you really got to know the business when you say they're dangerous you do mean that they're what do you mean by that well you know when you make good decisions good things happen and um you know people prosper mm -hmm. when you make bad decisions um, you know, bad things happen. Mm. And the last 24 months uh, for me to sit back and watch uh, what's happened to the franchisees mm. and watch happen to the employees. Uh, I got a call Friday. We had a young lady, uh, Robin Kennedy, been with the company 25 years. Boom, just out the door. Two weeks ago, uh, five days before Christmas, uh, give or take, uh, Rob Porter, been with the company 28 years. Boom, out the door, no notice. So mm. um, when you're trying to build a culture, because we're really not in the pizza business, we're more in the people business. So when you're build, trying to build a culture that uh, really promotes creativity and ownership um, and pride, uh, and you do things like that, it kind of runs counterproductive. Um, there's so much ground to talk to cover. We've got the pizza conspiracy. We've got the media company that apparently uh, extorted you and the company. Um, but let me start from the top. Do I call you Papa? What do people call you? <laughs> Papa. People call you Papa? What about your friends and family? Do they call you Papa? Yes. Everyone really? calls you Papa. Yes. And so this when, did, not, when not... did you become Papa? Well, that was interesting because we started doing the ads about uh, the turn of the century some 20 years ago. And... Um, we had the shirt tucked in and suit and tie and all that, but uh, people thought I was an actor, 
And right. Uh, yeah, they didn't really think I was a real person. <laughs> right. Uh, and uh, so we, um, Jordan Zimmerman with the Z Group, came up with uh, Papa's in the House. We, mm. uh, the shirt, put <laughs> Love the, the Papa's up, in the House. Papa's in the House, the boots, all that. Mm. And then, um, then it became, you know, Papa John's, and then it became uh, Papa. And then about four or five years ago, I actually had to change my name from John Schnatter, which is German, to Papa John. So we actually changed the name. Oh, you screen. are Papa You're, John. Uh, it's, uh, like we, on your identity, like ID? Or what do you mean? You yeah, know, he no, changed. No, it's just changed on the perception and the persona of okay. the brand. Because nobody knows Schnatter. Mm. You know, oh, so no. John, John is just an alias. There's no real John. <laughs> no, I am John. You're Papa John. Yeah, that's where they came up with the name, John. Oh. A roommate in college. Mm. Ball State University. He knew my name was John. He came up with the name Papa. Oh, Papa. Papa okay. John. Right. I promised him a pizza a week for the rest of his life. Did he uh, get it? He never came forward. Oh. Now, how can you be fifth floor La Follette, 1982, you come up with the name Papa John when there was no stores. We built 5,200 stores, and he still he hasn't come. came forward to claim that pizza. Yeah, and if you're out there, I owe him a pizza a week for the rest of his life. So take 10 bucks a week, okay, that's 500 bucks a year, times 35 years, is $17,500 worth of pizza. So do you think, do you, you, I think you may be assuming that someone wants to eat that much pizza, <laughs> maybe a fallacy. Well, if you come forward, I give him the cash. Yeah, or the cash. You can <laughs> I give him the yeah. cash, yeah. So you called you Papa before you even had kids. It yes. had nothing to do with yes, anything. We had the recipes, we had the layout, we had the equipment, we had everything but a name. Mm. And he's a doormate, uh, fifth floor of the Follett. That great six, Italian. And he comes up with it, and he puts it <laughs> Papa John in print. And I, uh, we were print-driven business back in those days because it was all coupons. Mm-hmm. And I fell That's in love right. with the name Papa John's. And that uh-huh. was. And a- so, were you? Did you go by Papa ever since you opened your first store? Like, let me ask you this: You, you, I, you, I know you were recently divorced. You were married for a long time. Yeah. How many years were you married? Thirty-two. And at what was she calling you, Papa? No, he never called me Papa. She called you John. Yeah, she okay. called me John. Okay, she never called you Papa. The I had a boat uh, one time that wasn't a big boat, it was like 19 feet that I called Papa. <laughs> yeah, Papa. That's, a, that's the earliest I can remember the uh, phrase Papa. I guess up. the kids call you Papa, that makes sense. You are yeah. their Papa. Yeah. Your Did employees you, call you Papa. Yeah. They always Did do. you ever think to start maybe a second business Mama? Mama Pizza? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you did? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we play with all those kind of Mama, different... Mama Johnny's. <laughs> Mama Johnny's. Hmm. That's very interesting, so I'll call you Papa. <laughs> you ever get any kickback? Is it disrespectful to call you John? No. No. You're okay being called John? Yes, of okay. course. Okay, yeah. okay. I'm just not sure, because you prefer Papa, though. That's just what they called yeah, me. I never really thought of it that I'm just hard. Curious, <laughs> I, it's like the one name anomaly, like Bono or right. Edge, the Edge. With Don, I don't know. So I'm just curious. I'm Kid curious. Rock. Kid Rock. Yeah. Rock. Right. That's not his name. Yeah. Yeah. The Snotter, though, they get rid of the Snotter. That's hard. It they, doesn't roll off. The, yeah. It took me years to even. I used to call you Schnatter. Schatner. Schnatter. Yeah. Yeah. Schnatter. Yeah. Schnatter. Pa- look, Papa John. Papa John. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, all right, I understand you are going through a divorce. Are you, are you okay? How's, or how's oh. everything? I mean, was that a long time ago? Was that recent? Um, four months. Wow. That's, oh, that's very recent. Yes. Is it as bad as they say it is? She's a wonderful person. But I mean, the divorce well. itself. No, I think it's, it's both of us wanted it. Oh, wow. And then, so, so um, you... it, um, I think it's been best for both of us. Hmm. Are you feeling relieved? Are you feeling? Do you, it's got to get like. Uh, well, okay. Are you mm-hmm. dating? Just pop out there. <laughs> Be, like you've been. You're single. You've got pizza money. You're healthy. You look good. You're you're in good shape. Slowly but surely. Ah, <laughs> Papa's getting out there. <laughs> no, I wouldn't getting say that. Some weird ass out there, Papa. <laughs> I wouldn't say that either. <laughs> mm. I wonder if there's any like. Uh, if girls might be into like role playing with you, where they like <laughs> that you play the papa or some shit, you, you know how they say like, "Call me daddy, call me papa." I don't know, just ideas, giving you ideas. You're newly single, I'm just giving you ideas. Uh, <laughs> Interesting. Would you want someone that 
his, um, let's say, in the pizza category, <laughs> <laughs> or <laughs> someone who's completely outside of the pizza world. I don't know if you really can pick. <laughs> you know, I think you, if you just go out and look for certain attributes, you know, I, I don't think that'll that'll work. I think it'll just have to happen. Yeah. Or do you meet women? You what don't. Do you... you don't if you're me. <laughs> yeah. It's tough. Yeah, it's real tough. Do you do like social events? Do you go out? I like to go to bed early and wake up early. So because you're a grinder, you're a CEO. You built this incredible company. Mm-hmm. Are you? You must be having trouble meeting women. You've been on Tinder or what? <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. So. I, they would kill me if I did something <laughs> like that. <laughs> that would be suicidal. <laughs> We've got to set you up with a nice girl, Papa. Uh, I'm fine. <laughs> I'll, gotta, take it, gotta, I'll take it from here, pal. We've got, we got to set you up. With someone. All right. Yeah, the Bachelor? I, I, yeah, I know. We, we do this uh, parody of The Bachelor on our show. <laughs> you're quite an eligible Bachelor. That would be a hell of a season. Uh, I assume you're not interested. i got to tell you, I didn't know we were going to talk about this, but it's kind of interesting. But I, I'll take the dating from here. Okay. okay. I, okay. I, don't I don't blame you. I don't blame you. You have an age limit now that you're single. <laughs> age limit with with the women. Would you date a like what's your what's your age cutoff now that you're single? I've never thought of that. Um, <laughs> Cuz you know a lot of guys let's just say, you know, and I don't blame them. They're out there, they're single, you're wealthy, you're looking good. You get out there and get some strange ass. <laughs> but some guys say I'm going to I'm going to cut it off at uh I don't know. 20, 30, 35. I don't know. What Do you have a cutoff? Have you thought about that? I think you could meet somebody that's probably 45 or 50 that acts and is active enough to be like 30. Sure you could. And you could probably meet somebody that's 30 or 35 and act like they're 45 or 50. I think it depends on the person. Depends on the person. I think so. Absolutely. Yeah. That's true. That's a good answer, Papa. <laughs> Safe answer. What would I, do? <laughs> I know that if my, I know if my dad left my mom, he would probably date an eighteen-year-old. <laughs> and I, I just know it. He's well, a pig, and I love my dad. Well, yeah, I love my dad. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> do you think it runs in the family? I don't. Good question. <laughs> I try my best. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I grew up with a very perverted dad, and I've tried my best to subvert those uh, feelings. But uh, if he if he if he was you and single, he'd be he'd be getting weird and wild out there, boy. <laughs> so, but I have a feeling you're you're good. But he's you're not good. He's and not. He's still with your mom. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. My dad appreciates you saying that. <laughs> you are from. You live in Kentucky. Are you like a local celebrity out there in Kentucky? People got to know. Like, hey, Papa, you get shouts like that out there. <laughs> You know, Louisville's probably where I get left alone the most Mm. because it's not a big deal. Mm. Uh, They just look at John, the pizza maker. John mm. loves making pizza, and John, a community leader, you know, good corporate citizen. I don't really think uh, Louisville probably get left alone more than anywhere else in the world, maybe. When you walk around like New York or L.A., I don't know how often you do. You probably get recognized a lot. You got a face on on the pizza box. You used to. Yeah, I mean, Latin America— very popular. Really? Yeah. Latin America? Like China? I might as well be on Mars. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, L.A., New York, a little less, but it's actually gotten more the last uh, the last uh, five or ten years. Mm. In the Midwest, you know, where Papa John's is really rock solid, for sure. <laughs> you're, for sure. You're a superstar out there, probably. Not a superstar, but they go, the pizza guy. The pizza <laughs> yeah, guy. So <clears throat> give them a $10 off card, take a picture. and they Oh, make, that's cool. Make, you walk around with gift cards? Oh, yeah. That's uh, awesome. Wow, crowd pleaser. They gotta love that. <laughs> yeah, it's, and it's it's really cool because you got one for me. I can get you a pizza. Card. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell corporate. <laughs> yeah. mm. Mm. Is it true you have the biggest house in Kentucky? I read that online. I don't know if it's the biggest. It's probably one of the biggest. One of the biggest. Yeah, I love my home in Kentucky. Pizza has <laughs> been good to Papa. Pizza's the whole. The whole thing's been a blessing. I've got so many people to be thankful for uh, that you know supported me and and gave me uh, a lot of encouragement early on um, when I didn't have anything. Uh, mm-hmm. I can't tell you how many times I thought we were going to go broke, and there mm-hmm. was people just really were there in my corner. And so, um, but it's it's been a great ride with a great group of folks. The the original. Uh, employee number one still works uh, for me. Oh, really? With me and, what position are they in? Well, she Denise Robinson. Mm-hmm. She was a um, she was a cook, and Daddy hired her as a cook for seven bucks a day. And I said, "We got to cook because Dad and I were kind of 
you know, jack of all trades, master of none. And uh, I said, great. And uh, he goes, there's one problem. I said, what's that, Daddy? He said, well, she can't cook. <laughs> <laughs> I went, she can't cook. You had to cook. And this is back when we didn't have seven bucks a day to blow. Mm-hmm. Um, but she had a great attitude. And Dad taught me early on, hire for attitude and train, uh, train for aptitude. That's mm-hmm. true. She's done. Uh, she's been with us, and she's great. You go, what you do? <laughs> yeah, she's, she's been big in the company. Thirty six. She does whatever she wants. Really? <laughs> yeah. She's. Yeah. So does she have your back now in this? Oh corp- yeah. Corp- good. Oh, good. Okay. You've still got your allies. In, oh yeah. In Papa's house. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. not all. Yeah, it's the, not all. Uh, it's back. Been, it's been great. Good. I mean, it really has been. It, it's to go through this is it's a fascinating experience. It's a learning experience, um, and um, it's 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 educational. I just wish it wasn't me. <laughs> you know, what I mean, I just wish it wasn't me going through it. But um, you know, we had a very comfortable life. You know, the company was making 150 million bucks a year. I owned a, you know 31 percent of it. Um, no debt. Uh, great pizza. Great product. Um, great ingredients. Great, great everything. And and um, so it's true. You, you know, and then this. This, um, this well, let's talk al- about it. Um, <laughs> let's 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 talk. Okay, you did an interview. Let's start here in November, in which you famously claimed you have eaten over forty pizza in thirty days. Now, first of all, that went sensational, viral. <laughs> what was your reaction to that? Well, I didn't say I'd eaten forty pizzas in thirty days. I said I over, had. Now. Hat. 40 pizzas in 30 hat, days. Well, 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 hold on. We're going to split hairs we'll here. Split, well, that yeah, I, when, when I said I had a pizza, that means I ate it. <laughs> well, when I said had a pizza, it means I'm inspecting. Mm. Right. You know, and so I'm I'm not eating every pizza. I may be eating parts of pizzas. But How many I, pizzas do you eat I, on a weekly basis? I probably eat eight or nine slices a week. Probably when I was at Papa John's, I was probably eating. Um, 12 or 15 because we're always testing new products. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, you I love fit. Pizza. You exercise a lot? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Ski. Because I bike. eat a lot of pizza I and I don't look like you. I think that much pizza but no <laughs> yeah, exercise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something's wrong with the way I'm eating pizza. <laughs> that won't work. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, pizza is actually very nutritious, very healthy. You just can't eat a bunch of it. You, I mean, it's three, you sounds would agree? Like, that sounds like pizza <laughs> propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's 325 calories a slice, 350 yeah, a slice. So, be, yeah, you eat one or two slices, you're golden. You eat six, Not me. seven slices, then <laughs> then, an you're, then you're uh, garlic butter golden, <laughs> <laughs> like myself. <laughs> <laughs> when did the garlic... Bu- you know what? Let's, let's stick to the... Let's stick to the story. Um, you got on Instagram. That's how we got in touch. What prompted you to make an Instagram account? Were you feeling the viral sensation of the Papa, the Papa comeback, Papa Redemption arc? Yeah, I think again the the board and um, leadership is probably leans to be a little more conservative, mm-hmm. and the uh, the social media platforms I think scared them, and so they they kind of kept me away from that that avenue. And uh, we hired a new PR firm. Um, uh, proactive up in D.C., Mark Serrano and his team, and um, they hired uh, Matthew and um, Jordan out of Indianapolis, and they said, you know, give it a try, and I said, I'll, I'll try it, mm. but if it turns negative mm. and it's it's nasty, I don't want anything to do with it, but, mm. you know, it's been, been great, two, right? It's been two and a half months. It's been cool. It's awesome. Yeah, it's something else. Well, you know what happened? Someone sent us a tip. They're like, I think this is Papa John's real <laughs> Instagram account. <laughs> And we're like, there's no way. We don't believe it. We've so always looked for you on social media. <laughs> yeah. Like, where is yeah. this Twitter? Where is this Instagram? We'll turn into a whole story arc for us where we slowly realize it was your, actually your, <laughs> right. your account. Yeah, so what does it look like when you say that they didn't want you to have an Instagram <laughs> account, let's say? Like, is it an actual conversation, a meeting where you meet with a team and they all have an input on what they think you should do? Well, it, the... Our generation didn't grow up with mm-hmm. with uh, social media, and uh, you got to understand in 1995, which would have been what 25 years ago, um, we didn't have computers in the store. Yeah. We were operating out of cigar boxes with deli sheets, mm. so we had to go through the wave of technology just to have POS, and then the internet came along, and we had to, you know, PapaJohn.com, right? Yeah. Exactly. I remember the yeah. video well announcing yep. that we did really well on the POS in that transition and we were first to the market on the uh, internet so we did well but then the social media came along Mm -hmm. and um i don't think anybody uh in Mm -hmm. the building um at you know at our 
uh, age demographics understood it. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah. by not understanding it, I think we kind of frayed away from it. Yeah. Um, but the it's a risk reward. It is. And for like, sure. well, coming on the show today, there's there's upside and there's downside. Yeah. And so you know, but anything that's worth doing is going to have a risk. Mm-hmm. That's um, the Papa I right. know. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. yeah. Well, I freak. I, I'm so glad you're here because to me, I'm, it's very brave of you to come in here with us. Uh-huh. But I do think that it. it, it it's just so incredible for you to have the courage to come in here and talk to us in this format that I think most people in your situation and under the advice of all the their handlers would 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 just totally shy away. But this is the most genuine way for you to get your message out. Right. And so right. I think that um, that this is a great step for Papa. Yeah. And but in all sincerity, the you've been a Papa John's fan. Oh, yeah. And um, <coughs> you, know, you get your wife here. So, Absolutely. Um, and I've, I just felt somewhat safe. I mean, That's I know good. there's going to be parts of the interview that like the segment we just left where, you know, it's like, well, I didn't know he was going to go there, but I knew that coming in that that was going to happen. <laughs> and, you know, oh, it's, it's going like, to get worse than that. <laughs> oh, God. Here okay, we go. Let's move. Let's move on. <laughs> so now you're making it sound like it's not that bad with you and the Papa John corporate, but they removed the mention of you on their website. Look here on the te- television about us. They act like you never didn't even exist. They go. They're, first of all, they're make, rewriting history. They're saying PAPA stands for people are priority always. You seen this? And then they say, they go, it was founded in a broom closet in Jeffersonville. No, no mention of you. Well, what's misleading to that? It says it's the foundation we started. Uh, there wasn't no Who's we. we. There yeah, wasn't no yeah. we. <laughs> so, but, I mean, that's got to that's gotta feel bad. I mean, this is your baby. This is your life's work. Papa, the rewrite, they, they won't even say, give you the credit of having your own name. Well, not to correct you, but um, <laughs> Papa always meant, has meant people are priority one always. We've always realized from the get-go you have to take care of your people first. That's always been your That's thing. That's been it. So that's, but, uh, that's not misleading. That's, oh, that's it's not. not. Okay. But the, the what fact about that, the name that they don't mention that, that whose broom closet that belonged to? Well, they have taken the position that I never existed. Yeah. yeah. Um, and... They have research that says half the people out there associate me with the brand mm-hmm. or that I am sure. the brand. The half, not 5% or 10%. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. We've we've kind of studied what corporate's done. Um, it hasn't worked out too well no. for anybody. Uh, this is what I call a lose, lose, <coughs> lose, lose. Mm-hmm. And one of my fundamental principles in business is everybody has to win. Suppliers, right. franchisees, employees, communities have to win. And this has been a lose, 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 lose. Um, but I don't know how you pretend like the founder didn't exist when he's alive and well. He's right here. And um, he's Papa. He's and it's authentic. It's the truth. We we did this the hard way. We we did this the long way, and we built it one store at a time, up to five thousand stores out of a broom closet. I'm not sure how you erase that. And if you do erase it, I think you do rub part of the population the wrong way. Exactly. So the the corporation has put themselves in a position that they're conflicted. Bizarre decision making. Well, I would. I call it corporate geniuses. Corporate genius. Sure, you would yeah. call it corporate idiots, but I yeah. I got it for the lawyers. I got to call it corporate geniuses. Genius. Okay, you got it. <laughs> um, it seems that they 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 must have made a calculated decision that they thought cutting you out after all the controversies would have helped the company on decline. That's what mm. I assume was their was their logic. But, uh, but I, people I, are not stupid too, yeah. you know. People. Well, that's. That's where we there's a fundamental disconnect between my beliefs and I think the corporate geniuses. I think I don't think you can fool people. Mm-hmm. Maybe once, twice, but I think people are smart. The fact that the corporate geniuses think <coughs> they can fool people, now that's that's well, not very smart. Even people that are like disagree with you or like outraged by the controversies they know that papa it's still called papa john's yeah. <laughs> and then everyone who's ride or die papa john's is pissed it's bad what do you think about the papadilla i mean were you involved in this um no would you ever uh, green light such a such a uh, abomination of god they, they obviously have research that i don't have um, yeah, it is <laughs> research. You don't <laughs> <laughs> like street smarts. <laughs> right. Okay, you got it. Um, well, let's play it out. Papa John's pizza. No, 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 no. Papa John's pizza quesadilla. <laughs> no, no, no. Papa John pizza quesadilla. Papadilla. No, no, no. Papa John pizza quesadilla. 
Papadia, <laughs> lousy calzone. <laughs> that's what, yeah, yeah, it is. It's a lousy calzone. Okay, how do you get that? I, That's what I said. I said, why don't you just call it a calzone instead of making it sound like. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a quesadilla. That, that in Have you was, tried it? Yes. What do you think? <laughs> Go ahead, Papa. <laughs> Speak the truth. <laughs> no, I, I mean, it's it's a nice side item. You're I, being nice. You're being nice here. I can tell. I thought you were coming in gloves off, but you're being I'll you're, gloves off with you, not gloves off with the corporate. You're you're being you're, you're being nice. Um, here's my problem. I've got I've got franchisees out there that I that I love and right. I do you don't want to hurt the company. I can't I can't say yeah. negative. I would not have put my all, all my eggs in that basket. That's for sure. The Papadella. Papadilla. 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 You can't even say it. <laughs> the Papadilla. All right. Well, then let's talk about the people that, like, you claimed in your now famous interview that um, there was a conspiracy to out you as the board of directors, that uh, it was completely fabricated what was ca- recounted of your racist language on the phone call. And you've claimed that those who perpetrated this conspiracy against you should be in jail. Do you, so or do you still stand by those statements? Well, let's go the last, you know, as a shareholder, um, you really can't put a board of directors in jail. Now, you can take their homes if they mm-hmm. violated the duty of loyalty and duty of care, which they have on multiple cases. So we'll, we'll see how that plays out in the courts. Uh, but you can't really, as a shareholder, put them in jail. Um, okay. Well, the, well anyway, I, I understand you're just, you're just speaking at a, at a matter of speech, but the conspiracy, the fabrication— these are people at the highest level of the company who have conspired to uh, ruin your life in, in, in short, right? Uh, do you agree with that statement? I do agree with that statement. Hmm. And so the is this the day of reckoning you spoke about? Well, well, the day, well, if you're a franchisee or an employee that we just talked about, two of them, 20 years, God, 25 years, God bless them. I mean, hmm. yeah, that's the day of reckoning when you lose you know, your career and you and, lose your job. Franchisees... I mean, they are, you know, this is very painful for me to watch. Um, we had, uh, you've seen the, the trajectory on sales and profit, mm-hmm. and now you've seen it crash. Oh, yeah. And um, that's very hard for me uh, to sit back with my hands tied. No well, matter how much money I spend or how, what I try to do to help them, um, I, my hands are tied. You know, I'm no longer running the ship. You can't help. Um, so uh, it's hard help. to watch this because when you built the machine um, and you have people around you that help build the machine, you know cause and effect. Mm-hmm. You know trial and error. And you, and you watch some of the things that are going on with people that have never been in the business and you watch people get hurt. I mean, hurt bad. Um, that's that's sleepless nights. And there's a lot of those. Yeah. You referred to a day of reckoning for the board of directors. What what did we mean? What does the rec? What is the reckoning? I heard I heard rumors that the phone call, the notorious phone call, for example, you got a copy of that. Is that true? Yes. What question do you want me to answer first? So, do you have the recording? Yes. Does it exonerate you? Yes. Oh, yes. Can we hear it? I don't know if you can hear it. I can tell you what it says. Okay. So, you need to listen what to the whole tape. What What happened? Tell me okay. about that conversation. The um. The when this went down on the 11th, uh, the company or myself uh, didn't have the tape. Laundry service had the tape. The company got the tape within 10 days, the call. But they wouldn't let me hear the call, the tape, until the next year, February of, of um, 19. So I f- was pretty sure what I said, and I know my heart. I know how I feel about this issue. I wasn't real worried about what I'd said because I wouldn't say anything that was going to put any of us in jeopardy. Um, what I said was, I never used the word. Mm-hmm. But you used the word. I said, Colonel Sanders used the word. But did I, you use the N-word? I said, Colonel Sanders used, used the N-word. Yeah. Used, I never used that word. Yeah, but Completely you used the word. I said the word. Yeah, you said that. In I said what, to what, him. What, what, Into the to, word. Yes. What, it's a little in a in a confidential meeting <laughs> with the ad agency that was supposed to be setting me up to protect this very thing. So the meeting was to make sure something like this didn't happen. So they should have said to you, "Well, Papa, you shouldn't even when you're referring to the word, you shouldn't say the word." But what they did, as I understand it, is they recorded this call that was meant to be for racial sensitivity training Correct. and leaked it. Is that uh, it's accurate? a little worse than that? Who they leaked s- it? they seek. Pardon me. Who leaked it? Like, how did it get out? We don't know. That's why we filed the lawsuit. Wow. Um, we laundry service and their response said they didn't leak it, hmm. mm. but Forbes got the data from somewhere. <clears throat> so I don't know if they got it from Papa John's. 
I don't know if they got it from an executive of Papa John's. Mm. We're not sure. Who but was they, on that call? Well, so, well, like I guess someone on the call was recording it. Yes, we didn't know the cor- the call was being recorded. That's the bad news. It was secretly uh, recorded. The good news is they recorded the call. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, because what I said was not as anything you, anti-racist. You, you, mm. I understand. You said you used the N word, but you used it in the context of ex- of of explaining that you're not racist. Well, although, can you see that some people would be offended that you would use the word at all? I for I've gotten into that 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 very issue myself, and uh, and I I can see where they're coming from in that yeah. that uh, when you even when you use the N word in the context of saying, oh, I would never say that. But you, you said it. You did say it when you were saying, I would never say it. Yeah, the, the thing about the call, the call was like 50 minutes. 50? 50. And yeah. the call was extremely positive mm. about, you know, my position, the history, how it was brought up on, you know, anti-race, period. Mm. Uh, there's no tolerance for it in my family and in my upbringing. Mm. And the it finally came up again at the end. I said, listen, so-and-so uses the word. I never use the word. Let's get off the word. Mm. Um, they recorded it. And you somehow, feel like they were trying to set you up. They kept trying to get you to say the word. Yeah, I think Interesting. I, I do. I think they were trying to agitate me. Mm. Mm. Yeah. What did they say to agitate you? They just kept pushing and pushing. Um, <clears throat> they kept oh, bringing yes. up the comments that were made uh, back in November mm-hmm. on the NFL uh, conference call, which there's nothing in that call that's even. Uh, even sort of provocative. Uh, the franchisees, the head of franchisee association, will tell you that it was innocuous, it was benign, hmm. uh, and yet they stirred that up and somehow painted that into the um, the race corner. And the company didn't do anything to defend that or to straighten that out or to point out that it was mischaracterized. Um, hmm. So um, that was kind of the first clue that the you know like, hey, if they're going to go down this road, we have got to make sure we have a plan in place to prevent this from getting uh, getting out of hand by being uh, not truthful, and that's what happened. So, did you have when you were on this call? It sounds like you now perceive it to be the intention of that call was to incriminate you, not to train you. Well, if you if you look at how do you at the time I had thirty one percent of the company, how. How do you oust uh, the founder, Papa John, from his own company? Hmm. And there's really no way to get that done um, except paint me in the race corner. Hmm. Hmm. And what the company learned with the Obamacare and the NFL comments is if they did nothing, social media in itself would take me to that spot, which was a very bad spot. And it just gave him an excuse to uh, to get rid of me. But uh, why would they want to get rid of you? Because well, now that you're gone, nobody, I mean, clearly nobody... Could anybody have benefited now at this point from you being gone? No, nobody has benefited. Yeah. It's back to it's a lose, lose, lose. And I think until this gets clarified and the public can digest really what happened, I think it's going to have consequences on, on Papa John's business oh. health. But let me finish. The, um, the company, when you're good at something, you make it look easy. And we just had a really good team, and we've been doing this for 35 years. It's kind of like doing what you all do. You just know what you're doing, and you're good at it. Um, We had a board and leadership that thought, okay, we can run a lot better without John. And, um, you know, it's it's intoxicating. I mean, 150 million bucks a year, Papa John's, helipad on the building, all that. It's intoxicating, and and, um, power and control and greed. Mm. Uh, is alive and well in corporate America. So their mindset was, let's get rid of John. Uh, to your point, let's pretend like he never existed. Let's take his, uh, take the company over. Uh, they had a bunch of self-interest. Each individual had different self-interest um, uh, with different uh, characteristics of taking the business over. And um, we'll just take it over and life will be, be grand without him. So you think it was a conspiracy by the entire board of directors? I don't exactly know. Right. We've tried twice. Uh, we had a lawsuit, it's called a 220, but basically it's a lawsuit to get the documents. The company hasn't given us any documents. Um, what kind of documents would you say? I want their emails. I want mm, their faxes. It's like a subpoena. I want their texts. Mm. We won that ruling. You uh, did? We did win that so ruling. So how does the court enforce it when they refuse? It, it has not been enforced. Mm. Oh. Um, and the chancellor, wow. uh, uh, chancellor called Burchard, um, and he's a guy I wouldn't want to mess with, frankly. And for him to rule in our favor to get those documents, and yet the board has handed over no documents, I wouldn't want to be in the board seat. And then we filed a second lawsuit with laundry service. Um, and that's simply to go get to the bottom of, get to the truth, the day of reckoning, as you mm. say. What mm. happened here? Mm. How did they do this? Mm. And I think what you're going to find is the at different levels, 
there was a different agendas and different goals. Uh, the folks at corporate had one goal, keep their jobs, uh, get John's money, you know, be the seat. Then the board had another goal. They wanted to be chairman. Uh, we had one board member that had a conflict. He took over the marketing, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then you've got laundry service, which uh, was Wasterman and Goodell. Um, and they have another agenda, which is probably to shut me up and to uh, take the company. You're Julius Caesars. You're the pizza <laughs> emperor. <laughs> yes. And and guy, uh, what was the name of your uh, hand? Uh, Richie. Richie was yeah. was Brutus. Was that a, is that a good analogy? Did he stab uh, that, you in the back? That's probably the, the best analogy on, I've on heard on the Richie. Senate. No doubt about it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. It's that was painful. I mean, Steve had been with the company 20 years. Hired him at six bucks an hour. Last year he made six million dollars, nice and, and then he, you know, pulls a stunt like this. But mm. you know, that's something he's going to have to live with. And you haven't spoken to him at all. <laughs> no, yeah, not good blood. <laughs> what would you say to him if you saw him? Oh gosh, what would I say to him? Um, I don't think I'd have to say anything. I think I would just. He knows how disappointed. You would look at him. He he knows how disappointed I am in him, and he knows how disappointed that he is, is with himself. He let Steve he feels bad. I don't know, but this guy hurt a lot of people. Hmm. We mentioned too, but literally thousands of people have gotten hurt by Steve Ritchie's um, selfishness and um, ambition and disregard for the team and other people. But the guy has hurt a lot of people. Hmm. So much uh, intrigue to un unravel there. So yeah. much interest at play. Yeah, yeah, a lot portrayal, of drama. Yeah, a Part lot of, of drama. A lot of drama. Yeah, portrayal. This must be exhausting. Yeah. And you're at the center of it. It's very Shakespearean. Do you feel like <laughs> you're in the middle of a Shakespearean play? You know, betrayal is an interesting... Um, On that scale, though. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's um, like I said, it's fascinating. Um, it's an education. I just wish it wasn't me. Do you ever wonder why you? I mean, what did you do to to incite such betrayal? I mean... Do you do you find yourself wondering how uh, maybe uh, what like how how could this happen? I mean, what do you think about that? Well, you know, Papa John's is the American dream, and when you look at power, control, greed, envy, um, you have that in spades. Um, the you know failure um, is in what some ways easier than success because you know everybody wants a piece of success, and Papa John's was the pinnacle. You know, right. um, Papa John's Pizza, American Dream. Third biggest Apple pie. pizza chain in the world. Yeah. And I think that makes things more tempting for people to get intoxicated again and to do silly things. Um, but you... but to answer your question, I thought this could happen. Mm. And I prepared for it physically, um, intellectually, and what financially. What do you mean physically? Well, you have to be, to go through what you I've gone through the last 20 months, you better be on your game. You better be rock solid because you know it's you're taking a lot of um, you're taking a lot of shots, and so you you got to you got to take care of yourself. You got to take care of your. You health. look healthy. Yeah. You in therapy? No, <laughs> probably should be, but no, yeah, you should be. Um, <laughs> You've been through a be. lot. Are um, you embar are you embarrassed to to talk to a therapist? No, no, I've talked to a therapist okay. before. Um, no, just, I think I think you I think you need a good therapist. Yeah, you mm -hmm. know, in times like this, and, you got a good dog with you who I just met. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Um, but um, I knew this could happen. I thought this was going to happen. How long but were you suspecting? You feel it. If, mm. you're, if you're an entrepreneur, you, feel, you sense things. You sense the iceberg uh, in front of you miles and miles before everybody else does. So mm. I knew this, but I thought it would come from the outside in. Mm -hmm. I thought it would be a hostile takeover or somebody, mm. you know, coming in and doing something crazy. I didn't know it would be from the inside. <clears throat> You know, I didn't know that the people on the inside were capable of doing something like this. So you this. didn't anticipate what and, really... And here's be. why. People always act in their self-best interest. And this, the way they've gone about this, uh, like John or don't like John, the way they've gone about this has hurt a lot of people. Um, it's hurt my employees. It's hurt my franchisees, suppliers. This has not been a win for anybody. And I knew if they did something like this, would this would be bad for them because it's stupid. This really is stupid. I mean, you, the, if you're going to get rid of the founder, do it over a period of time. Don't take him, you know, outside, kick him to the street in one day over something he didn't say. I mean, they manufactured this and then they did that, did they, what they did. But I didn't realize that they weren't intelligent enough to realize that by doing what they were doing, they were actually hurting everybody else. I missed that piece. Hmm. 
let me go back to the to the um I, I'm just so intrigued by the phone call because when we go back to the phone call on that fateful day, everything happened so fast, right? Like I read that on the same day that the phone is was it the same day the phone call happened that you were removed from the from the board of directors? No. The so uh, how much time kay. passed? The phone call happened on May the 22nd. Mm -hmm. um, Richie fired the agency laundry service on the media side the next day. Mm -hmm. And I went, what are you doing? I mean, because they're going to think that I, I fired them. They had a, a tough conversation with the CEO of uh, laundry service that Friday. And then two weeks later, the owner, Casey Washerman of uh, laundry service, called and said, if you don't give us $6 million, we're going to bury your founder because we taped the call. So, wow. So they tried to extort the money. Papa John's didn't give in to that demand. And then since Papa John's didn't give the guy the $6 million, they went public with it on July the 11th. So hmm. there are a couple things there. First of all, there was a, a pretty good time distance um, um, between the May call, um, May the 23rd, and July the 11th. And second of all, Papa John's board or management didn't do anything to make sure that the founder and the brand spokesman <laughs> were protected. Mm. In fact, Papa John's did just the opposite. When the, the call, when the um, when all this hit Forbes, Papa John's piled on mm -hmm. instead of defending. And so why did Richie fire the media company the day after the call? I think again he used me as an scapegoat to say, well, the reason that we fired you is because John didn't want you around, which is. I had, you know, nothing to do with that. So. But did he, was he privy to what was on the call? I don't yeah, understand. he was on the call. Oh, he was on the call. So was was there outrage expressed? Were people offended on the call? No. Or after the call? No. It was all gravy. No. So why would he have the presence of mind to fire them the next day? I just don't understand. Like, <clears> what was his justification being like? It had nothing to do with the call when he fired them. Um, or it did. The, I think... The folks in marketing realized that laundry service was the ra wrong firm to buy the media, and so Richie just kind of used that as an excuse to do something he should have done anyway. <clears throat> okay, so it was I can un speculate. It was unrelated to the call. I would be speculating. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he fires them, and then and then how much time passed before they blackmail the company? It's a Good week one. or two. That's when they demanded the six million. Casey Washerman. Richie wow. said he was belligerent on the phone if he didn't get his six million. You know, with a name like Laundry Service, you guys could have been more skeptical. <clears throat> Sounds like they're laundering money. <laughs> Sounds shady to begin with, <clears throat> the Laundry Service. But I'm assuming this is a big, reputable media company. What does it mean to buy media? Okay, in marketing, there's at least two disciplines. With social media, media maybe a third. One is you actually create the ads, creative, and shoot the ads. The second is you have the money to run the ads. Mm. The creative is maybe a six, seven million dollar year account. The media buy is maybe an eighty or ninety million dollar year account. <clears throat> and that was all going through them. It will, yes. So it, they were they were there was a lot of money going through them. They there was a lot at stake by firing them. They were losing a lot of money. Yes, and it's a little bit worse than that because laundry service had hired a lot of people thinking they were going to get the media side of the business. That's my understanding. Oh, yeah. so they had invested heavily in Papa John's, and then when they were fired, it, you think it provoked them because they, it would put them in a very rough position. I don't know a lot about this because I wasn't involved, but I do know that they were worse than provoked. They were they were very upset that they didn't they lost the media mm. side of the business. And so then they come a week later and say, pay us six million bucks, which I'm just going to assume is what they spent preparing or something, maybe. And they're, if I'm just trying to justify their actions, they're like, yo, we spent six million dollars in Papa John and you pulled the plug on us. So pay us the money or we're going to release this tape of, of the founder. And instead of, they, so Papa John's doesn't pay. Now, did you know that they were threatening the company? Because you were on the board of directors at the time. Richie was the CEO. So did you know that they were threatening the company? Was that public knowledge among the board? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we knew that. And were you scared? I mean, what was your response? I didn't, I didn't like the whole situation. Oh, yeah. Because um, I hadn't had a lot of involvement w with laundry service. I didn't like the fact that uh, Richie had fired him the day after the call. Right. I didn't like the fact they taped the call secretly and didn't. Oh, yeah. You know, in fact, when they told me that they want $6 million, or they're going to bury the founder, they have a tape. I actually went, 
thank God they got a tape. The Mm -hmm. tape will protect me because I knew what I said was not, that was a good tape for me because Mm -hmm. it was a very positive meeting. But ultimately it doesn't matter because nobody's heard the tape. And right. I, the so damage far. has been done. Well, laundry service doesn't want anybody. The damage has been done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, my mm-hmm. God. Yeah. Um, the tape exonerates me. I mean. You have I, the tape. I don't have the tape. You do not have, have the tape. tape. Yeah. We but you, have, have, the you tape. have heard it. I have not heard the tape. You have mm-hmm. not. But I have people that represent me that have heard the tape. The tape helps me. Okay. I wish the tape was made public. Yeah, me but, too. Because Papa John's and laundry service do not want that tape public. <laughs> Because it's gonna it's gonna <coughs> depict a whole different picture than mm-hmm. what was depicted with Forbes in the media. Mm-hmm. So how how was it reported first that laundry service came to you guys with this tape and said, uh, "Pay us six million or we're gonna release it." How did you first hear about that? Richie. Richie told yeah. you. He called you. He called me, or I was just there. We went in, his in office. person. Yes, in his office. And see, if Richie knew, Carolyn Euler, the head, the GC, uh, legal counsel, knew, and then the board would have known that, that Washington wanted $6 million or he was going to bury us. Now, we owed at the time, we owed laundry service between a million and a half and two and a half million. So we did owe him some money. Mm. I don't want to say the six million was, uh, was you know. Blackmail, uh, necessarily. But it was, it was, it was extortion. But how, how is it not, so, I mean, extortion is illegal. So how is it that... You guys weren't able to press charges against them. Why would Papa John's put me in that situation? Why would they not call the FBI? Right. Why wouldn't they call the FBI? <laughs> you got to call the you're FBI. Being sorted. Yeah. You know, your founder's on the line. They're painting him in a in a box that he, uh, and it's something he didn't say, and he's not. And and at the same time, uh, once it comes public on a false narrative, then they bury me farther. Hmm. So the question is, well, Papa, was Papa John's in on this? Yes. Was Richie and uh, Shapiro in on this? That's, yes, wow, but that's intense. But remember, I'm hammering on Goodell. I'm telling the the Goodell to get his act together. With so who's Goodell again? Goodell's the commissioner of the NFL. Oh right. And I'm telling. Well, Goodell is personal friends with Watchmen. They watch each other with kids and so forth. Because they do all the media buying for the NFL. So, you got me hammering on Goodell, get your act together. About the kneeling. Kneeling. Um, I didn't say anything about the kneeling. I just said to resolve this to the players and owner satisfaction. He's friends with Washman. Washman owns laundry service. So all... You were pissing a lot of people off. <clears throat> I don't know if I was pissing a lot of people off. I was pissing a Goodell of, off. You are pissing powerful people off. Goodell, for sure. That, that and I, th- I think bad. the fact that we were in four universities <laughs> with um, <clears throat> free market and entrepreneurship um, that probably upset a few folks at, um, on that side of the um, equation. But um, I think Richie was going to lose his job. Which uh, he did, right? Yeah, Kurtley wanted to be chairman of the board. Shapiro, he wanted that $40, 50000000 a year in marketing that we talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, Goodell wanted me to go away. And um, Washington was pissed because he lost the media business. So I think you have a bunch of odd events. In the events, middle of a hurricane. Middle of a, a bunch. And the, look at the sediment at the time with the public. You know, you have all these movements that are going on that are just, you, we just fell right into it. Mm-hmm. And instead of the company being there to help and protect the brand, the spokesperson, they kind of piled on. Right. Were you not able to call the FBI yourself? We did. We have called the FBI. The FBI is looking at this, mm-hmm. but I mean, you got to have cooperation from from, cor- b- from corporate <laughs> and from laundry mm. service. <clears throat> That's why we filed the lawsuit. Mm. See, the lawsuit will get a lot of discovery. A lot of the, the things of the day of reckoning, the truth will come out mm. in this lawsuit. I'm fascinated by this first meeting with Richie. When you sat down in there, what what did he say? I'm just, I'm so interested by that. When At the <clears> time, <throat> you thought he was a friend. Yeah, we'll An keep, ally. We'll, we'll keep this pretty high level and move quick on this. But the meeting was supposed to be a meeting on the creative because they were going to put me back in the ads. They took me out of the ads from September, October up till now we're talking, you know, June, July time frame, um, maybe May. But um, we were going to go back in the ads. And so we went back in the ads and we wanted to make sure on a PR front we were ready in case the race card came up because of the kneeling controversy. Um the meeting was supposed to be on creative, the other aspect of marketing. So I walked in thinking it was a creative meeting, and the first thing they put down is a sheet of paper. How many it, people were there? Five or six of Okay, them, board know. members. No, not just um, executives. <clears throat> and okay. My assistant was there. Richie was there. Okay. A uh, guy named um, Joseph Stein from Laundry Service was on. Okay, on oh, the so line. he was there. Yeah. What was he doing there if he was threatening you? 
Well, that was Wasserman. That was, remember, that's after two weeks after the call. <laughs> right. But was it, okay, go ahead. You're May the twenty second. The original conference call, not the not the threatening call. Oh, that's okay. So, yeah. so we got a, we're a meeting on the May the twenty second. We think it's a marketing meeting. Hmm. Okay, and it turns into be the first. They put out a deck and said the first question <laughs> is, "Are you a racist?" And I'm like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa." Oh. Do, I know it's a setup. You Go can, ahead. No, I'm fascinated. They say, so, "Are you a racist?" Are you a racist? And I'm and I looked around. I'm going, "What word of this?" I thought we were going to talk about creative. Mm. And um, he said, "No, we're going to talk about um, you know uh, anything to do with race and PR um, in this meeting because you're going to go uh, to Chicago Sunday for some interviews." Mm. And I said, "Well, who who else? <clears throat> how long have you all known we were going to do this meeting?" Mm. And they said, well, about a day and a half or two days. I said, well, why didn't you all give me the agenda? You were irritated from the I beginning. was irritated for, yeah, because they, they pulled a fast one right mm-hmm. from the get-go. Right. So they're just trying to agitate and agitate and agitate. What other kind of questions on there? I mean, that's a hell of a way to start a sensitivity <laughs> meeting. <laughs> Are you a racist? Wow. Yeah. And, how, and, and, and the call was for 50 minutes long. 50 minutes. And what other kind of questions do you recall you know, that I'm asking? Upbringing, you? how I was raised, you know. It wasn't of, really sensitivity. They were, they were mm-hmm. prodding. Yes. And did you get a sense that there was something off about the meeting? I never got comfortable with the meeting, but um, to the point where I was a little bit careful about my responses because I didn't, you know, I you didn't were, feel good about it. But, yeah. Um, and the, the comment at the end, nobody thought anything of it. You know, hey, y'all got to knock this off. Mm-hmm. Colonel Sanders calls black people the N-word. I never use that word. So let's just stop. But in their mind, they're like, we got him. That's what I, th- I think you're right. Wow. And so fast forward a week later when you walk into Richie's office and he tells you that the company's being extorted. What was that meeting like? I go, what do you mean? And he said the guy was... Um, <clears throat> going off the deep end. He was belligerent. That was the word Richie used. I said, why is he belligerent? He goes, he wants his $6 million because he's got a tape that says, you know, you said the N-word. I said, well, I didn't say the, the N-word in the context. I said, mm. you know, I never say that word. And um, I said, the tape's going to help us, Steve. Mm. And then so from, you know, the end of May 1st of June to the first week of July, um, they tried to get it resolved. Um, so they were going, the lawyers are going back and forth. Mm. So I guess they didn't get it resolved until the end of this the is, end of July. This so so when they decide to make it public, what did they? They never actually released the tape. They just made a like a an announcement. Like what did they announce? Because the the tape has never <clears throat> been released. So what actually did they say? When I got off the aircraft coming back from uh, Columbus, Ohio, on the tenth. Five o'clock, Carolyn Oiler called me and said, um, "Who is that?" The GC of Papa John's, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and because um, she was trying to get the matter resolved, um, or so she said, with laundry service. She said um, the head of HR for laundry service is talking to Forbes about the use of the N word, mm-hmm. and that's the first notice I got. And a couple hours Your later, your heart sink. Yeah, I went. Oh gosh, here we go. Yep, mm-hmm. you yeah. knew it was. Coming. I knew. I but I didn't know that the people on the inside that I thought were protecting me. We're actually setting all this up. And then um, Forbes called at 8 and said, we're going to run this article. Do you want to comment? I said, well, let me see the article. He said, well, you don't get to see it. You, mm-hmm. you see it in the paper tomorrow morning at 5.30. And next day at 5.30. Did you leave a comment? No, I didn't. I didn't see the article. Right. I mean, I didn't, you know, I didn't know what, where they were headed. Do you regret not giving a comment? No, because I had no idea what was going on. Right. Yeah. But you knew that they, you probably knew at the time it was going to be Papa John said the N-word. Is that what you expected? Or <clears> is that not what you expected? Knowing what I'd known through the NFL before when I said, let's settle this between the owners and the player satisfaction, and they turned that into race, I knew that it was a very dangerous position for me to be in. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I knew this was not good. I did not know my own company and an agency who was hired to keep this from happening were in on this to actually make it worse, not better. So you, were you shocked when you read the article in the morning? Um, I was shocked at the headlines. And, right. you know, I was like, wow. Do you remember what the headlines, said. what they said? Um, they, the headline played up the use of the N-word. It made it sound like that I'd called somebody, you know, right. word. It's versus, just Papa John used the N-word. Yeah, they made it accusatory nature mm-hmm. when what mm-hmm. I said was, um, 
I don't use that word, so let's not use that word. In fact, if I go to dinner and somebody uses that word one time, don't say the word. And I'll get up and leave dinner. I literally, and I've done that more than once. But um, it's just not a good word. Mm. So don't use the word. I don't use the word. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, you, how, <laughs> you, how many times you, uh, I guess in, con- I've never been at dinner with somebody who used the N word. I don't know if it's an area. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Dinner, does cocktails, it, whatever. Does it yeah. happen? Does it happen? Oh, it, it's happened in the past. Yeah, yeah. but it's a, it's a different lay of the land. Yeah. You think people? I mean, in L.A., I guess people are more conscious. Yeah. But you think uh, there's still a lot of racism I'd, out there in your parts? No, I don't think it's prevalent. But sometimes you get somebody that's had a few they, drinks they and they get just, a little sloppy, and yeah, it's like, like it's hey, not cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If if it was part of their vocabulary, they wouldn't be somebody I'd associate with any, right. anyway. Yeah. Right. But some people think it's cute or funny or whatever. They try to be edgy. Yeah, and it's not. <laughs> yeah. So the headline comes out. It's shocking. The the shock back in the media is is immediate. Yes. And and were you and I as I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong, um, you were removed from board of directors that very day? No. <clears throat> I resigned as the chairman. You resigned. Was that how does that look? Because ob- were you ousted? I mean, or you resigned? Okay. What's the difference? The I don't want to get too technical, but this is corporate governance. The shareholders vote the board of directors in. Mm-hmm. So to get a board of director removed, it takes a shareholder vote. We didn't have a shareholder vote, and at the time I had thirty-one percent, and that would have been tough to get rid of me as a board of directors. The board of directors vote on who's the chairman. The board of directors asked me to step down as chairman because it w- they felt like it would save the company. Mm. So um, Wednesday the 11th, I'm still thinking the board of directors is mm. still in John's camp. Uh, and I had a couple meetings with one or two directors that Thursday or Friday. I still thought the board of directors mm. was in the John camp. It wasn't until Saturday night that he called an emergency meeting on Sunday that I went, oh, my gosh, my own board is now going to use this to hurt me. Because, you know, I think the the stepping, the act of stepping down was like almost came off as an admission of guilt. I didn't have a choice. Remember, you didn't have a choice. Well, the board of directors. They voted you out. They, oh. they, would, they would have voted me out if I hadn't stepped down. I see. Yeah. Wow. What a nightmare that week must have been for you. I mean, just what, what <laughs> going on, right? Yeah, I mean, there was that <clears throat> that night. And then, remember, by this time we had two PR experts on staff. <laughs> um, and the Wednesday that this happened, 11th, was the last time they ever talked to me. So mm-hmm. nobody on Papa John's has ever called to, mm-hmm. to help. So you got two people that are supposed to be crisis managers. You're in the shit storm and nobody from the company's nobody. reaching out. Are you suspicious? You're like, <clears throat> what's going on here? Um, I had to hire... I heard, uh, an agency out in LA. You had your own people at eleven o'clock on Saturday night. That's when I realized we had a problem. Yeah. Mm. Is this bullshit? These crisis management people? Because it, I mean, the crisis wasn't managed. It was full blown. Did they help? Um, I'd say the agency that I have today, proactive, has turned it around. Um, for sure. Um, mm. The agency we used in L.A., we've used them twice, and to your point, it hasn't been, been, been good for me. Mm. But proactive has been very good. Mm. The position we're in today versus where it was at seven months ago is night and day. We're now on the offensive. <clears throat> do you regret not do – you, do you have any regrets about how it all went down? Anything you would redo over? Well, um, I'll be fine. I mean, you know, I'll be fine. Um the damage done to the employees, I keep coming back to that, I know, and the franchisees, these people, the way they handled this and the way they went about this and their motives um, have hurt a lot of people. Um, that part um, keeps me up at night. Um, there has been nights where I lay in bed going, my gosh, you know, that's not what I said and that's not what I'm about. How, you know, it was, it was, you know, never thought my world was going to come to an end, but it's kind of like kind of scary because you kind of don't know how to get yourself out of this mess. Um, and the, when you're painting in the corner of race, it's bad. Oh it's, yeah. It's a terrible position to be in. And especially when you're not, um, there's been days where I wish I'd have said something that was, mm-hmm. or acted like I was <clears throat> a hey. racist. Cause then, then you get treatment or you get help or you say you're sorry. 
but that's not my nature. That's not what I am as a being. And um, that um, that's, a, you know, how can you say you're sorry for something? That or maybe you, correct the record. Be like, yeah. hey, uh, I guess you did you expect someone to do that for you? Well, <clears throat> if the, this has caused a tremendous amount of damage. <laughs> Um, the company was making $150 million a year and now makes basically zero. Um, if the board stops and says he's on probation, <clears throat> you know, he's on the bench till we find out what happened here. Mm -hmm. They had the tape within a week. Mm -hmm. They could have said, oh my gosh, he didn't, what he said was anti-racist. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a positive call. He's not, you're not portraying this right. If they t would have characterized it in a truthful manner, we're out of this mess pretty quick. Mm. Um, and um, they didn't. Instead, they piled on. They dug themselves in a hole. And when they realized that what I said was nothing wrong with it, they'd gone so far that they couldn't turn back. And they're, they're, today they're in a position where they can't, turn, they can't turn back. They can't take the hit and own the, um, the mistake of how they handled this because why the shareholders and why the – well, the shareholders have not uh, filed suit against the company because the stock's high. We'll talk mm. more about that later. But why the franchisees haven't filed suit against the company, I don't know. Hmm. Did your personal net worth take a hit? Well, when I was running the company, we we were at eighty nine bucks a share, and now I think we're at sixty five. Mm -hmm. um, but at one time, the stock got down to thirty nine. Right. So it's you know thirty nine versus sixty five. It's like half. I mean, it, it, it's but so the stock's actually doing well. Um, <laughs> there's a concept called private equity. Mm -hmm. And private equity is probably the most dangerous financial instrument ever created by mankind because it inflates the values, the PEs. And so stock prices um, are kind of pulled, being pulled along by the private equity uh, farce. And so Papa John's. You think it's up. worth much less than it's being portrayed on the stock market? Papa John's? Yeah. How is a company worth $2 billion that makes zero? Mm. Tell me. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> You know, 2021, they may make 40 million bucks, 50 million. If they don't have any one-time write-offs that they've had for three years in a row, they keep having one-time write-offs year after year, which is pretty amazing. Do you ever think about just dumping your stock now while you can? Oh, yeah. I've, I've had— Because you still I, have 17%, right? That's just, no. I, I had, One time I had 31% 10 million shares, and now I'm probably closer to 2 or 3 million shares. So you've dumped a lot. Dumped a lot of stock. I, it's, my way of, it's, it's my way of shorting the company. Oh. Mm. I don't think the company's worth anywhere near to 65 bucks a share unless Jeff Smith, who's uh, the chairman of the board, who owns a company called Starboard Value, unless he's found a bigger sucker than he is to buy the company, um, you know, at 70, 75, I don't think the company will stay at 65 bucks. I think the stock price is the last card in the house of cards to fall. Mm. But they may have the company sold, you know. Mm. A, you know, got Rourke out there. You got Inspired Brands. Rob Lentz, the CEO, came from uh, come Arby's, which was Inspired Brands. So Inspired Brands may be... You think Arby's is behind the, the Pizza Dilla? <laughs> Papa Dilla? The you Papa can't Dilla. even... Yeah. I like Pizza Dilla better yeah. than Papa Dilla. <laughs> yeah. Do you think Arby's... Do you think it's an abomination of your name that they use Papa in the Papa Dilla? Papa Dia? I, I didn't feel any, didn't any feel animosity. It. And do you think Arby's is behind the Papa Dilla? I have no reason to know to, to believe <laughs> his that. influence. Um, um, why would why would because uh, the CEO of Arby's came to Papa, right? Yes. So I'm saying that madness, the Arby's madness. He's not from the pizza category. He has no pizza experience. <laughs> Correct. So he's coming at Papa John's and he's pitching this crazy nonsense like the Papa Papadia. Um, I don't know about Off all the that. wall. I just know that the only way you can justify $65 a share is if you got a buyer. Mm. And so stay tuned in the next 50 to 75 days. If, see uh, what happens. And see if Inspired Brands don't come in and buy Papa John's. <laughs> now, when you know, you and by the way, if, you, if, if Jeff Smith can find a bigger sucker than he is, then good. Good yeah. for him. <laughs> who is John? Who? who? <laughs> Jeff Smith is the chairman of Starboard Value. Now, he's a he, sucker. He, Why do you say that? Because <laughs> it's 65 bucks a share. Oh, I mean, his strike price is 51, and the company's worth two billion dollars. That makes zero. He's put money into the company. 250 to keep it... million. Oh wow, uh -huh. that's a lot. Otherwise, the company was. This is how bad it got. The company was um, in violation of their covenants on their loans. Mm. So Smith had to come in and save the board. Liquid injection. Yeah. To he, keep the stock price up. To keep no to keep the company, company from going in default mm. from the bank loans. Wow. Yeah. Scary that's, times yeah. to be uh, that guy. 
Well, he's sweating, you think? No. Nah. Is he sweating? <laughs> I don't think he's sweating. I think the board of directors of Papa John's was sweating before he put in two hundred fifty million. Now, mm -hmm. if Inspired Brands or Work doesn't buy this company in the next fifty to seventy five days, they're all going to be We're sweating. We're all bullets. sweating. They're all going to be sweating bullets. <laughs> right. And the pizza won't save you if they don't fix it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm. I'm. I, I want to go back one more time to this big conspiracy. This phone call. Was there a moment where you're like, where you had a moment of realization that? You had been betrayed by everybody. And when was that moment? I can remember talking to our ad agency and second biggest franchise, March, April of 18, before this happened, and going, what's going on here? Because it wasn't, we, we felt something was going on, but we didn't know the conspiracy with Richie and Shapiro and Curly. We did not know that. And then... Dan has just walked into the room and disrupted everything. <laughs> Why are we in the room, Dan? I'm going to hook up a, a pizza can for later. Okay, thank Go ahead. Um, <laughs> uh, Dan, maybe not. Okay. We're done in <laughs> Dan has uh, ruined the show. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> Dan is angry. He looked up. Uh -oh. Thank you, Dan, for being proactive. But go ahead. Thank you, Dan. Let me get my thoughts together here. <laughs> <clears throat> um... You, I was, uh, you were talking about the, you were talking to the franchisee about the moment you realized. We, we knew Richie was a bad actor March, April of 18. Mm. The call was the 22nd. I was going to fire Richie in um, July. Mm. So Richie knew I was going to fire him. So when did I realize it was as bad as it was? About a month or two after July 11th. I was because the company every day would do something to make it worse mm. instead of trying to salvage it uh, or make it better or, um, you know, to get the truth out there. They actually pay, kept painting me in that race uh, mm. corner. And so my own company was trying to, you know, try to throw me under the bus. So that was that was. And so that so month you, or two after after the it hit the wire, I knew the company was my worst enemy. And, and to you, this day, the company's still my worst enemy. Right. When it comes to the PR, or the N word, because they they won't let it go. Mm -hmm. They keep trying to bring it up. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's the only way to keep me out. <laughs> you know, once we debunk the N word, which we're going to when we get the tapes, then the company's got a big problem. When you realized you were betrayed by your company, did you pick up the phone? Did you call somebody? Did you do something? What did you do? Um. You know, I would talk to my confidence and my confidence, um, Zimmerman, um, the dean, um, you know, Hearn, um, Aaron Thompson. Was there a moment where you stormed into Papa John's headquarters? Oh, there was there was some um, uh, by this time they're misrunning the mismanaging the company and they're doing things that are going to hurt people. Mm. And you, uh, you've stormed into the office. Didn't storm in the office, uh, but I let them know that I wasn't happy. Did they ever not let you in? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I've been barred from Papa John's. So was there a moment you went there and they're like, sir, you can't come in? No, there's moments I went there and all the with employees, when they saw me, they started crying because they're happy to see me. People were crying oh, yeah. to see well, you. They know, I, man, you got to, I love people and I love pizza. I mean, I love my employees. They know that. So you can't ever take that away. But yeah, um, and so the the new how many people cried when they saw you? Tears. Oh, it was a dozens, dozens. Dozens. Oh yeah. The tears were flowing. Kim, I remember Kim in the uh, corporate headquarters, the R and D department. They felt My, bad. Oh, they know what happened. I mean, again, we come back to the people that wake up every day, and make this mm. country great. They're smart. Mm. They know exactly what's going on. So there was never this movie moment where you went there. And you're like, I'm coming up, and they're like, Sir, you can't come up. Well, what they do is they hire lawyers to say that you can't come up again. Oh, okay, so you mm -hmm. went up and they're like, get out, you can't come back. And the, what, what, what does the lawyer say? Just restraining order? What does it mean well, that you can't go up I there? don't know if they threatened a restraining order, but um, they, they definitely did everything they, they could to keep me out of the building and to keep me out of the stores. You ever poke them? You ever show up at the stores at oh, the yeah. building? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Any good stories? <laughs> what's the best provocative, what's, what's the best poke? I don't know if it's a poke. It's just, you know, it's um, when you own as many shares as, as I do, you want to make sure that you want to see what's going sure. on. Yeah. Um, 
we ordered pizzas last week in D.C. And, and um, that's the colonel, Colonel Fridas. Um, a colonel who works for Papa. Uh, yeah, government worker. Oh, but yeah, actually owns a franchise. Um, and, you know, he's a, he's a pretty good operator. Mm -hmm. um, and the, um, the pizza, they miss, you know, made the pizza. It was supposed to be half pepperoni, uh, half meats. I mean, mm -hmm. half pepperoni, half cheese. So they messed the order up. Pizza wasn't cooked right. It's undercooked. Mm -hmm. And the employees weren't nice to the people around me. They were mm -hmm. rude. Now, that would have happened under my watch. No. How and, could you control on such a granular level what goes on at a Papa John? Because it's the same machinery. Yeah. It's the same protocol. How has the pizza changed so dramatically? You stop measuring. The matrices, which we measured quality. I mean, we measured how many pepperonis, how many times the phone rang. Why would they stop doing that? Because it costs money. It costs there's three, money. There's three reasons you stop measuring. One is uh, to measure costs money, especially when you measure the hardest things like, you know, uh, edge lock, uh, cheese to the edge is the crust uh, rising. Two is you don't care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you really don't care what you're serving. <laughs> Why measure it? And three is, um, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, the difference between this pizza. Papa is presenting for audio listeners. <laughs> this is, this he is has pictures pizza. of photos that he's presenting of P Papa John pizzas. He's yeah, presenting you, a 10. A 10, which is. That is a is, beautiful is, pie. Yeah, it corresponds with a 10 point scale. The perfect 10 <laughs> point. Now, the, the new management, new leadership threw this to the wayside. They got mm. rid of this because it's expensive. Mm. But the problem is when you train people to do this and you don't measure, they start doing this. this. Now, what do you rate this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Four. That's four a five. four. So what we're getting, we, what we should be getting is tens, but we're get getting it. fours. Now, they won't go from a ten to a four overnight or mm. in a year, but they will go from a, a eight and a half pizza to a seven and a half pizza on the way to a six and a half pizza if you don't measure it. Because mm, if you don't measure, measure you got to measure it. Yeah, <laughs> you got to measure it. Well, now that we're on the topic, we have five Papa John pizzas backstage. Let's bring them in and let's have you rate each one. Can we do that? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Let's bring it in, Dan. Um, and while while Dan's setting that up, this is going to be fascinating. I mean, to have the Papa John. Here they are. So now we've got five pizzas. Thank you, Dan. Dan, you didn't ruin the show. You were. Uh, we love you, Dan. We love you. We love you. So now here we go. So you want to just go handheld, maybe, Dan? That's Hooking up a handheld camera. That's what you're doing. Or whatever's what easy. Do, but... yeah. So uh, we're going to set up the camera. This is a big moment for us. So let's start here. I'm going to stand up. What's that? Oh yeah. Okay. Let's throw. Well, yeah. Let's throw it to a quick break. There's a buzzing in here too. That's I like. I just heard that. It's like really sharp. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to gauge pizzas with the Papa himself. So do not go away. We are back with Papa John. We are about to rate the on a scale of what is it? One to ten. One to ten. Uh, the quality of these five pizzas. Now, it's from the same store. You know what we should have done is got five pizzas from five different stores. Because if mm. it's a good store, maybe <laughs> there's just one good employee who's making good pies. It's not representative of the whole thing. But regardless of that, here we've got a cheese pizza. You look at a shot. I mean, that looks... I mean, that looks clean to me. Give, uh, give me that rating. Break that down for us. Okay. On the and br bring the mic up to your uh, mouth. Okay. Ten point perfect scale... Um, not a bad cook, cook, little light, uh, plenty of cheese. <clears throat> See the edge lock, the edge lock around the edge. Edge lock. You want an edge lock uh -huh. because if you don't edge lock it, when you take a bite, the ingredients will fall off. How's the edge lock? The edge lock is the cheese locked into the crust. How's it here? Um, good, better, but still sloppy. Oh, really? Yeah. What's a perfect edge lock? Let's try a bite. Here. Cheers. This is my. A there's a perfect edge lock. Oh, just a perfect little. Yeah. Or, hey, cheers. I've always wanted cheers to cheers. Button. Cheers. To Papa. Okay, there's there's a great edge lock. Mm. But on a scale of 10, that's that's borderline 8. That's servable. That's servable. I'd say so. Break that down. The, cru the crust could be, it could rise a little more. Mm -hmm. You want a little bit more like a French bread where it's got the cells that are different. Are the pizzas just go through a machine though? How do they control the cookness? It's called an M dog. Um, it's where you. It's how you manage the dough. You got to manage the dough correctly to get it to react good in the oven. The oven's like a convection oven. It's real so it's warm. It's a dough process. Dough air process. Mm. Dough air heat. Yeah. But th this is good. Good pie. That's a good uh, pie. Good pepperoni, butter in the right place. You could serve this pizza. That's that's that's. I'd be happy with that. 
I would be happy with that too. If that's the worst we serve, we're good. What do you rate that? If I was really hard, seven and a half. Wow. Um, if I was uh, generous, eight, eight and a half. Wow. Because he's not, seven and a half. Not clean edges, right? And you're you're looking you at a, tomato sauce. How do we prevent the bubble? Is that un- unavoidable? <clears throat> no, that's no docking. That's when the uh, machine. And, and then it's oven tending. Hmm. But if you're not measuring it, this will slip into some bad habits. Right. So this is not bad habits all the way, but it's 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 uh, baby stepping away from this. Hmm. So well, see, the, let's look at the other ones. Oh but yeah. This is the worst we ever serve. We be we're so good. So this is and Papa's being tough here. This is a seven and a half. I give this a I give this a ten. I could eat this whole thing in five seconds, which well, I will the minute you're That's why you do what you do, and that's why I do what I do, right? Like pizza. <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly. I don't run a pizza chain here. Now, this is the... That's funny. Now, this is the heart Valentine's Day pizza. Were you... Does this predate your ousting? No, no, we did, we did that product. Um, now, how am I supposed to eat this? There's not a slice on it. Um... <laughs> Just beast mode it. I don't. I don't know if I've ever seen. It. <laughs> now that's a, P, a papadilla. That's a new. That's now Ethan's papadilla. That's what that is. <laughs> Look at that damn thing. No, I mean it's a gimmick. I mean it's a heart shaped pizza, which is cool, but you still got to cut it. We can't rate this. I, I don't know why they don't cut it. That's a papadilla. <laughs> That's a Papa Dia. Yeah, exactly. I agree. <laughs> That's more like a quesadilla. Right. I don't know where they came up with this Papa Dia. It's a calzone. <laughs> it's, it's actually pretty good. But, yeah. you know, this is fun. It's Valentine's. Yeah. You know, it's got plenty of toppings. For what it is, it's fine. I you know, agree. It's, I'd give it a 10 because it's fun. A 10 for fun, everybody. But, but I don't know why they didn't cut it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know if they're supposed to cut it. I don't know if they're, because, I'm going to take another bite of this. I'll make sure you get on your side. Yeah. You don't have anything. You don't have any cooties or anything. <laughs> Jungle disease? I don't now, one thing is they didn't... They I don't didn't... think it travels with pizza, though. <laughs> <laughs> one thing they didn't do is put the... Um, <clears throat> no, didn't put the, no, I know. That's not a time. I don't know. That, you know, Corporate Genius is trying to, have... sa- trying to save 12 cents. Is that okay. what it costs, 12 cents? Ten to twelve cents. I'd have to, it's been a while since I've been there. But you ever think about cutting it for cost? Me? Yeah. No way. You live and die by the butter sauce. Yeah. Yeah. You're the only one in the game that does it. Uh, I love the the garlic butter. Is we've it done just that butter? since we've done that since day one. Um, garlic butter, salt, and uh, garlic. Um, but we now have you know we do it in mass quantities, so it's a little bit different recipe. But it tastes the way we did it from the broom closet to today, thirty five years ago. Was that your idea, the butter? We had a um, independent pizzeria in New Albany next to Jeffersonville, and they put butter in the box, and I liked the concept. Oh. And we started it, and people fell in love with it, and we never could stop it. It's I'm like surprised the corporate geniuses haven't taken the butter. They, out. they might, yeah, they might. I mean, it's, cents 20, it's like 25 yeah. million bucks a year, 30 million bucks. Wow, a year. that's a wow. lot of butter. It's a lot of butter. <clears throat> Man, you stay guys are tuned like on supporting. that. Yes, yeah, stay right. tuned on that. Oh wow! So now this is the Papa's favorite. Is we went a, back in the in the uh, oh John's favorite yeah which they removed from the website by the way oh they did yeah uh, I don't exist <laughs> <laughs> so this is the uh, pepperoni sausage and six cheese yep um, let's break it down okay uh, it's a little dry um, the crust didn't quite have that good rise in it um, you've got good distribution of toppings there's a little bit of sauce on the edge edges are not clean. Again, we're we're in the ballpark of an eight. Um, You're th- a t- you are a tough pizza critic, my friend. Well, <clears throat> if the if it had a good rise to it, see, it's a little flat because they're right. not managing the dough. Cheers. But see how flat it is. Right. You don't it's want too that. flat. You're right. Well, it is too want, flat. Yeah. But when you, you know you get to the point when you've done this millions of times where you can kind of see it. You're the pizza life. god. You don't have to eat fifty pizzas in thirty days. You just eat a couple bites and you know what's going on. Are you pizza Jesus Christ? <laughs> 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 Where does it come up with this? No, no, no I don't want. I'll, Are you the savior of pizza? <laughs> We're gonna find out here. <laughs> if you're the if you're the pizza Jesus Christ, then Richie is Judas. <laughs> Do you agree that Richie's Judas? <laughs> I agree, Richie's Judas. There you go. <laughs> we got some. <something>. <laughs> hey, he asked for all this, right? Right, of course. 
Okay. So that's, but I actually agree. You 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 nailed it. The the crust is too thin and it affects the. I don't like the crust. It makes it dry. It's dry. You want to keep that moisture. So what do you give that one? Because I didn't like that one because of the crust well, issue. I give it looks. I could looks almost good. get it to an eight, but. Again, they don't measure this. The problem is it looks great, but it doesn't taste that great because of the crust. They no longer measure the rise. Come on. you got to measure the rise. And the best way to measure the rise is the cheese pizza. Mm -hmm. So if you get the cheese pizza right, then you'll get all the other products right. But they stop, they stop this. How do you but measure the rise? Because you cut it, and then you dissect it like surgery, yeah. and you see how much of uh, that French dough look you got. And so but what affects it, the dough? What that, happens if in the morning you go to make okay, a pie? Okay, the age of the dough. You're not getting that rise. Then the dough is either uh, too green. What do you it's do? Too new. It's not warm enough. Mm -hmm. um, or the oven settings are not correct. So you got to tinker. You got to tinker, but we have a management system in place to make sure that that process happens correctly. But what gets measured gets done. Mm. You know, you um, what you inspect is what you expect. Right. They stop this. This is a problem. Huge problem. Huge problem. Okay, so same problem. Wow. Nice. All right, see how they're plumped up here? Absolutely. Two fundamental things in a pizza. <clears throat> ingredients out to the edge, ingredients in every bite. Mm -hmm. No ingredients there, no ingredients there. Right. Again, we're back to the desert. Yeah, that's, that one. I'm we, having a huge problem with this area. Yeah. That product is not, that's not as bad as, as you know, sinful as some of these other ones. But, you're see, you're on your way. To Papa this. is you're on, you're on your way to this with this. See, that's a disaster. It's a disaster. Yeah, and, that, and you're getting close. Let's um, try it. Now let's it's test, be dry. It's let's be dry. test the rise. This store is having a rise problem. They're not managing the dough, and they're not managing the dough because they're not inspecting. That's not up. They're not. They're not up. Ten point. Uh, ten point. Perfect pizza scale went out the window when I left. Mm. Our, that's our friend Richie. Judas. <laughs> I'm gonna start calling him Judas. What's his last name? Steve Ritchie. Judas Ritchie. <laughs> this is it's not, not good. Not good. It's not good. The rise is all whack. So if you're at home <clears throat> and you're not getting this with a good rise, you need to call the store and ask for a new pizza. You think Domino's you? and Pizza Domino's and Pizza give a guarantee. Why shouldn't Papa John's? No guarantee. Oh, that looks That's good. a little better. That looks That's a nice. little better. That's gonna be an eight and a half pizza. Uh, I'd love look. to see a 10. Well, if we we got to get a little rise. I mean, if we had a little rise here, then we're approaching a 9 with this pizza. This one's going to be a little flat, too. It's the same store. I mean, it's the same dough. Yeah, same dough. Same oven. Right. So it's a disaster. Not a disaster. It's just Papa John's, <clears throat> hmm. when the dough rises and it mixes with the sauce, uh, the... When the <clears throat> yeast feeds off the sugar, it secretes CO2. When that CO2, that, that chemical reaction mixes with the sauce, that gives our product that zing. Mm, and if you, don't, you. if you don't have that chemical reaction with the dough, the rise, you don't no get zing. zing. And this pizza doesn't have zing. And the zing is the capital P in Papa. I think so. Yeah, me too. It's not, it doesn't it's have like, zing. Take a piece of Wonder Bread, little perfect cells and take a good piece of french bread mm -hmm. there's a huge difference because right. one has a good rise and one doesn't mm. this product it's, it's not the recipe of the dough i don't think they change that too much even though they change it a little bit it's the how they're managing the dough wow and see <clears throat> there's three things that make a great product consistency how you put the product together 10 point scale and the ingredients now <clears throat> they have changed the ingredients Somewhat. They got rid of the olive oil on the They'll dough. They'll come in Pizza University. Right. Do you they, consider yourself a pizza professor? I mean, I just know what tastes good. Yeah. I mean, you know, as my uh, farmer friend says in Modesto, it's the food stupid. <laughs> you know, most people have rocks for taste buds, especially mm. the corporate geniuses. They really don't care if it tastes good or not. I mean, mm. all they care about is stock price, earnings. They don't really care about the people and the product. But... At the end of the day, you know, people that can taste the difference and want to pay the difference, that's our loyal customers. Right. And if you get it right, they can tell the difference and they'll pay the difference. They don't eat the pizza. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're they're up in their ivory towers and they don't eat the pizza. I think you're right. Unfortunately, I think you're right. You need people that, that love pizza. The manager of that store is the center of the universe. The manager of the Some store, of the universe. Ma center of the universe. Oh. They're the they're the, the you know, the the glue that holds it all together. Mm. 
you know, they're the one that builds great teams. They make good, uh, great pizza, and uh, they really make Papa John's go. Wow, that was a treasure, a treat. So, I mean, what was your overall impression? I think the the presentation was good, but there's a real crust issue going on here. It's an epidemic, I would say. Uh, it's on. I would say it's the new the coronavirus of Papa John's. Well, you know. Uh, as Ray Kroc said, your quality is only as good as your consistency. Right. And <clears throat> what you saw here is bad habits. Right. But they're consistent. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you want to get the point where you're doing the right things uh, in a very consistent way. So mm. that there's no surprises with the consumer. But <clears throat> there was a lot of good with these pizzas. I agree. But if you look at these product two years ago versus... Uh, 18 months versus 12 months, every six months, if they don't measure it, it will continually get worse and to the point where then your average score is a six and then you're dead. You're dead in the water. You're dead so in the water. How, when dead you were water. running everything, how frequently do you do this kind of quality control? You look great question. The, <clears throat> uh, the, how do you measure a million pizzas a day? And the answer is you don't. You measure 70,000 a year and you poll. Mm-hmm. And so <clears throat> if you measured enough and you incent, what gets measured gets done, what gets rewarded gets repeated. So we paid bonuses on doing this the right way. Mm -hmm. And that's all been cut out. Um, really? Oh. Right. So they don't get in a bad habit. It's like your diet or your exercise. You, you don't get in a bad habit, you know, in a day. Mm -hmm. You slowly over time get in a bad habit. And what will happen if they don't measure this um, then over time it'll get worse and worse to the point where you can't even recognize it's the no. pro product from this. Now, is this that? No. But at least it's in the ballpark. Mm -hmm. Now, a few of those other pizzas that I showed you, you know, that's death. What do you think about Domino's and Pizza Hut? I think they, I think they do a nice job. I mean, I, do, I really They're do. They're business for a reason. What do you think about little, I like to call them little <clears throat> seizures? Mm -hmm. I think for the, the money, they got a, good a, value. A good value. They use fresh pack sauce, uh, good, good product. Mm. Um, and that's the thing with, we were talking earlier about no experience. I mean, this is not like, I mean, the, the head guy at Papa John's, he's yeah. done sandwiches, Arby's. Well, there's no really national roast beef chains except Arby's. Well, he did Taco Bell. Well, there's no national chains that, you know, do tacos, but Taco Bell. Pizza, you've got four big players mm. that are all pretty good at what they do. Right. And then you got another uh, half the market that's your independents, mm. which are, really good at guerrilla warfare. So, I mean, they're tough. I mean, I'm going to do a spot uh, podcast this week with an uh, independent called uh, Rocco's mm -hmm. out of New York. They're based in D.C., but they come from New York. <clears throat> and, I mean, the guy's a street fighter. Mm. I mean, he knows his business. I mean, mm. he's going to get you. So, much more competitive, uh, hyper-competitive. That's true. Yeah, it's, it's tough. you got to be really, really good to be successful um, at uh, the pizza delivery business. And, you know, you keep seeing these little chinks in the armor, those little chinks are going to add up to, to big, bad chinks. Mm. Well, we've pretty much said it all. Papa John, we've eaten pizza. We've talked pizza. We've talked pizza conspiracies. <laughs> I mean, what, what stone is left unturned? What do we, what, what's left? Is there anything you want to add? Is there anything that I should have asked you and didn't? I mean, there's a lot of ins and outs here. Is there anything you want to say to the people, the fine people, of the world. And by the way, I do want to say, actually, just to ask you a question, and I'll let you answer it. We reached out to Papa John years ago because we are, we've sold, I, I like to say, I sold more we're Papa sold. John pizzas than Peyton Manning. I don't, I don't follow football. Is that the guy who used to be in that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Pey Peyton's a great hockey player. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on. I'm not that ignorant. <laughs> um, I've sold more pizzas than Peyton Manning. Yeah. My, my and dietitian I, was adamant on me coming on this show with you all. <laughs> That's the guy in back. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Adamant that I come on this oh, eight awesome. years ago. Mm. And I said, I said, why? I had my agent at the time reach out. I says, why can't we get a deal with Papa John? I'm going to sell P. I'm going to, I'm going to put points on that stock, but they, they declined. But you heard of the offer. Yeah. It got to you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ah, that's, I wanted to do it. I mean, you know, it's that's so <laughs> interesting. So but, what happened? Well, you know, it's like, it's like meeting somebody and they go, you know, I think, um, I think I'm crazy. I think I'm losing my mind. I it just, you know, and then you meet somebody that says, I'm not crazy. You know, I'm, I'm not crazy. Well, the person that thinks they lost their mind, they're not crazy. The people that think they're not crazy, they're crazy. This self-righteous, oh, John, you can't 
go on that show to Ella and Ethan. Oh yeah. my gosh, you know, and we're so self righteous. Mm. Our words are perfect and our behaviors are perfect. Those are the people that are doing things behind the scenes right. that are dangerous. <laughs> mm. Dangerous. That their, their their behavior behind the scenes would scare the stripes Man. off a raccoon. But you forgot to ask me about graduating college in three years. <clears throat> <laughs> I uh, I totally forgot. Yep. You yep. Did, well, how did you, you so you yep. go ahead? Yeah, I, I finished second in my class. <laughs> second really? from what the did bottom. You study? Second from the bottom. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, and I've, I've got the last did guy in my not... pocket. I got a picture of him just to make myself feel good. And did you? So did you? Didn't finish in three years. You were finished in three years. It sounds like we finished in three years, all but one class. So did but you graduate? Second, you did it. Second in the class. Second from the bottom. Yeah. Okay, you got it? Material, you got it. yeah. You brought in material, prepared material. Yeah, any other uh, bits you got? No, I appreciate y'all having me on. Yeah. Uh, it's been a delight. Now, if Domino's ever reached out and they're like, wow. they want to come on board, Wow. what would you say? Well, we're working on um, wow. a lot of things in the future. The Remember, I love pizza and I love people. Whoa! <laughs> and, Wait, is there a possibility that there's a... Whoa. What well, are you announcing here today? <laughs> well, we, all, we, we always are in search for a better pizza. And we always are. Better Even when I, was with, when I was with Papa John's, you always got to have better ingredients. I mean, you, you can't uh, make a soap for well, salad salad. Well, Domino's has been making some big moves in the pizza category. Yeah, they, they've, they've killed it the last 10 years. They've done really well. You think that they could be a worthy ad, uh, ally to you? I don't know about that. We haven't talked about that. I do know that we're always in search of a better pizza. I'm trying to and, decipher what that means. And uh, there's a couple of pizzerias that really make a really, really good pizza mm -hmm. that we're looking at. We're doing a show. You can have the first one. I don't know what on that means. One. You you want to invest in them? Well, <clears throat> Papa John's, we always wanted to be uh, America's independent pizzeria mm -hmm. because the independents make the best pizza. Mm -hmm. Because they're right there right. doing it. Right. Um, and... We were public. We were a big company, but we always tried to act like a family-run business with regards to people and product. And that's what the independents do. They have to. they got to be scrappy, and mm -hmm. they got to take care of the, the food. It's the food stupid. So we're doing uh, a podcast with Rocco's, a pilot this week. Mm -hmm. You heard it for the first time up in D.C., and we're going we're gonna to hit Rocco's Pizza. Now, uh, uh, they know what they're doing. This is a ground up mm -hmm. investment. Well, this is well. I'm not. I'm not investing. I'm just going to go in. It's called Pizza with Papa. Yo, you're making a pizza uh, podcast with with wow. Pizza with Papa with Rocco's Pizza. That's our pilot. So, what and, is this Rocco's Pizza? You seem well, to be uh, have a vested interest in their success. Well, we we have. I love small business. Yeah, small business is what makes America great. And even as big you as think we, Rocco makes better pizza than Papa. He makes really good pizza. Wow. Um, if they keep doing this, uh, yes, I do, uh, because he's making sure this doesn't happen. In fact, if you go in to Rocco's, you'll see he doesn't violate he any. He follows that 10-point commandment. He gets, Is it like the Ten Commandments? It's like the Ten Commandments. Ten pizza commandments. <laughs> it's like the Ten Commandments. <laughs> um, but he's interesting. Um, mm. um, he's, if, uh, Papa, if I'm reading between the lines, it sounds like you are in the beginning of of getting behind a new pizza empire to rival your former... I, mm. I see a great battle of forging. <laughs> Rocco's v. Papa John. No, but the, the, show's, I, the show's all about uh, the American dream. It's all about mm. small business. <clears throat> and since I love pizza, what better way to go to the American dream to America's independence? And we're going to start off with Rocco. Mm. Pizza with Papa. And that's going to be fun. Um, and then we got a few other things we're looking at with finding a better pizza. You know, always in search of a better pizza. And so the independent pizzerias make the best pizza. So Documentary? I wouldn't mind doing that. A TV you know. show like uh, well, Guy Fieri? Like Papa, <clears throat> Papa, Pizza well, guy, with Papa? Well, Guy's a friend of mine. And uh, mm. Papa's not no guy. <laughs> I mean, you know, Guy's really good at what he does. <laughs> um, he knows food, too. He knows food uh, really well. But I know pizza. So we're going to have fun. We're going to go out mm. and be with the entrepreneurs of America. Uh, America's independent pizzerias. Big we're going to top shop. Big plan. It's fun. I mean, he uses, I mean, uh, Rocco uses fresh pack sauce. He uses Stanislaus, which we're big fans of, of those folks. Um, he's using grande, grande cheese, which is a, a higher butter fat, buttermilk. I'll talk about that. He's using a Baker's Pride deck oven. That's what we started in uh, when we started in the broom closet. I mean, I'm, I'm fascinated uh, by you are a scrappy young man with a humble beginning. You've, you've come to be extremely wealthy. I mean, how does that, did, did you, at what point in your career did you become, be like, oh, shit, I'm like, I'm a wealthy guy? 
Well, in the broom closet, um, we did two hundred dollars one night. My brother and I were jumping up and down because <laughs> we thought we were rich. Yeah. So <clears throat> we've always made a good living. Um, no, but come on, there's a difference. <clears throat> okay, well, we're gonna put, there's yeah. a difference between like you know a couple hundred thousand, ten million dollars. Um, when we went public in June of '93. I didn't have $5,000 to take the family on a trip. Really? You went public yeah. with that and, little money? And then the next day, I was worth $100 million. What? I was 31. Holy shit. So that was the day when we, we did, because really? that was stupid money. It's thir- you're 31 years old, and you make $100 million. So, you don't, there's no way you know how to handle that. So what happened? Well, you go off the deep end for a few years. What'd you do? What'd oh, you no. buy? <laughs> what, everything. Tell you know, me. You, no, you, you What's just, the dumbest thing you yeah, bought tell that, me you, I'm. that you spent, like, ridiculous... Bought a boat. That's about as stupid as Yeah, the boats are expensive. Um, eh? bought, a, <laughs> bought a Dodge Viper. Thought that was cool until I got pulled over in it. Um, <laughs> but um, I think... What's that I, like to get that one from? Okay. The, I've never met somebody that's successful that was arrogant and pompous that in a short period of time became unsuccessful. And so no matter how successful you are, you got to stay gracious. You got to stay thankful. Come on, you, you got to stay humble. And it, when you make a hundred million bucks at thirty-one, you know you you got to have uh, some people around you to do some pruning mm-hmm. to make sure you don't think you're as smart as you think you are. And so you know, was it bad? No, but could have been better. Yeah, but they don't write a book on this crap. <laughs> you was that, ca- was that cash you just cash, got? Cash, and damn, that one. it is. It's just yeah. cash. Just straight into your bank account. No, c- cash and stock. Stock. So wow. let's say it's overnight, eighty million in stock and twenty million in cash. Enough, yeah. that, you know. So with that mm-hmm. money, you probably buy a house, buy yep. a boat, buy yep. a car, yep. and then you what put some in like a money do? in the stock market or the money, like a money market account. Yeah, you, you try to buy property, Bank account, you property, know, dividend good, stocks. Yeah. Um, you know, you buy some Warren Buffett. You know, some folks who <clears> you know what. What about doing. your family and friends? Were they like, whoa, this guy's like? Do people act differently? I mean, that always happens, doesn't it? You know, the friends, really, the family hasn't really, that doesn't change them. They're pretty grounded um, because that's just, um, you know, to respect the people that make this country great is in making their lives better. I mean, that's that's really the key to happiness. That's how I get fulfilled. You find yourself withdrawn, though, as you become, because it's almost like it's hard to relate to other people when you become that wealthy, right? Do you find yourself withdrawn more? No. no, I don't have a problem. I mean, I actually relate better to a waiter in a restaurant or somebody that's driving a you know truck than I do a governor. I do much better with people that work for a living and, and um, <clears throat> are scrappy than I do with people that are wealthy. I, I can do both, but, you know, I can have that repertoire. But I'd much rather be with somebody that's – I'd rather be with Rocco's Pizza next yeah, week than, uh, people. than with the vice president. And I like the vice president. He's fine. Who would want to be with him? Who would I mean, you'd rather be with Rocco too? <laughs> Plus, you get a good pile. On the Mike side. Pence doesn't seem like a lot of fun, but uh, and I don't know. <laughs> We're <laughs> not <laughs> touching he politics. Does, yeah, 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 yeah. But <laughs> how, you, <laughs> how long do it take you to come up with the Ten Commandments? Do you um, have the ten, um, an enlightening um, one day? The or ten point it, perfect pizza. Yeah. yeah, we had this from the get go. You did, but over the years, you get research, and research refines little things. Like, we always had an edge lock, but we didn't call it that. And we always tried to get the ingredients out to the edge. Um, Is this distracting you that I'm eating? No. Because I, mean, I, I think it's I'm great. Genuine. <laughs> I'm I got. I'm just trying to, the dichotomy of one minute you say it sucks, the next minute he's eating the hell out of it. I'm just trying to figure out what it's, but, um, I don't yeah. think it sucks. It's just got, it has a little, um, what did you call it, the crust issue? Doesn't rise. It has a rise issue, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> but um <laughs> but um you ever get heckled on the street from people never we haven't had one incident uh out in public about this whole wow. issue that's what i say a lot that's of this, a, lot, a lot of this was fabricated by the by the papa johns and the board which is very difficult when your own company starts making things up and creates an, a narrative that's false why did why did the nfl guy hate like why why did he have a distaste for you because i was on his case to fix the problem Listen, that's what leaders do. They fix the problem. So when do you, you f- mind explaining a little bit about that issue? Because we didn't really talk about it. But, like, what do you mean by you saying that you were just on him to fix the problem? Okay. Our, our largest spend was the NFL. It was some $40 million bucks you a year. You guys were huge with yeah. them. How much? Huge. $40 million. Four, $40 million a year, give or the take. The exclusive pizza sponsor. Mm-hmm. Yep. Official pizza of the wow. NFL. That's huge. Um, 
and the ratings were off 20% because of the kneeling controversy. So there was less ratings, less people were watching, and you were paying the same amount. Right. I see. So take a that 20% decrease in ratings on 40 mil. How much is that? That's an $8 million mm -hmm. loss. So our being the fourth in the category, we don't really have the sustainability to cover an $8 million mm -hmm. deficit. So my marching orders to Goodell was fix this to the players and owner's satisfaction. Mm. He didn't like that. Mm. He didn't like that at all. So In fact, you, I told him. Did you I said, never say stop the players from kneeling? No, of course not. Because the headline that I consumed and always saw was that Papa John doesn't want the players kneeling as if you were taking a political no, no, stance no. against that. No, no way. So I, how did that get out? I think the company promoted that too. Papa Remember, John from even back then yeah, was in November. Papa John. I think Shapiro and Richie by that time were like, if we don't say anything and let the media, hmm. um, you know, crucify him, then we can advance to take over but the company. Who, who got the story? Who, like, because they got the story wrong. So <clears> who originally told them it was Papa John doesn't want the players kneeling? The comments were 10 after 10 on a Wednesday. And by within an hour, they changed it from fix the problem here, Roger. That's his bad leadership. Fix it to the players and owner satisfaction to kneeling to race in less than one hour and it went viral. So it was premeditated. They were sitting on the comments. And well, what it well, is it a far is it a stretch of the imagination to think that fix the problem means get them to stop kneeling? No, because I think they can kneel. Mm -hmm. I think they just have to do it in a way that doesn't uh, polarize the situation. Again, I'm not going to tell them to kneel or not kneel. You just were looking I just at wanted, the bottom line. I just want it resolved. Yeah, yeah, because you're. And they did get it resolved the the following year. Mm. Um, but it had gone on too long. But from a from a from a business owner standpoint, I can certainly see where you're coming from. I mean, you're paying forty million bucks, and now you're getting less eyeballs. Oh yeah, yeah. It was you know when you know, you have to understand eighty percent of the monies going to the NFL are the small business owners that Papa John's calls called the franchisees. So we're expected to be good stewards of their money. And so when we're spending forty million and we're getting a twenty percent <laughs> discount on our spend then it's my job as a CEO in a public health company to say, hey, we got we to resolve this. We need, wow. to, we need to get this done. You know, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And the, you feel that he had, there were options for him to fix it? Like, what, what could he do? Well, he, he did fix it. They fixed he it the next eventually. year, yeah. I'm not exactly sure how he fixed mm -hmm. it, but he did fix it within 10 months. They banned kneeling, didn't they? <clears throat> I think they took the kneeling pregame. Oh. Or they mm -hmm. put a penalty Off in or the something. Field. They did something, but they resolved the issue. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I just took a huge slice, a <laughs> huge bite. Did this whole, it seems, uh, let me just chew my food. It's good pizza. Just a surprise issue. <laughs> oh, it's my recipe. It better be good. <laughs> um, it seems that this whole conspiracy started, or the first time I saw you in controversy was Obamacare, Affordable right. Care Act, when you said, you oppose, and correct me if I'm wrong, you you oppose the Affordable Care Act because it rise it <clears throat> increased the cost of pizzas by 12 cents or something of that nature. No, the analysts worried about the cost of Obamacare. Our delivery charge per pizza is about 250 260 a pie. Obamacare was 14 cents. So the point was, it's insignificant. <laughs> it's not a problem. <laughs> I mean, it's less than 20% of what it costs to uh, deliver the pizza. So it was a, an analogy to explain that 14 cents a pizza, because there is a cost. I mean, you know, when you provide more health care, there's a cost, but it's, it's insignificant. On a, because on a, you, on, a, on a $11 pizza, 14 cents mm -hmm. is just over, you know, over a point. So it's not a problem. But your comment was that you were going to lower uh, employees' hours to avoid paying their health insurance. No, I would never say that. I will no. say in Hawaii, there's a franchisee out there where they had a program similar to Obamacare, and that's what he did. He lowered the hours, and that's what ended up happening with a lot of the play, uh, uh, companies in the market. But I never said that. No. So you are saying that that um, you your comment was in support of Obamacare and not against, because it sounds like you like you're saying it was 13 cents, and that that's a small amount. So who cares? But at the time, it was reported, and what I've read is that you were saying that uh, it was going to be an undue cost on no, your company. No, the, the, my comments were the $0.14 cents is incidental, <laughs> it doesn't matter, and that it's good that everybody's going to have health insurance, hmm. you know, because if we did it, everybody else had to do it. So we, we looked at it as a good thing if as long as everybody did it, you know, as, as one. So we didn't, if hmm. you look at the speech I gave at Edison, 
we looked at it as a very good thing that 100% of the employees were going to have health insurance. Hmm. That's interesting. There's that's a transcript totally on that too. not how it was um, reported. But remember what I told you. When and this was in 2012. 12, this was a long November time November the 2nd of 2012, yeah. what did the company do? Nothing. What happens when the company does nothing? John gets hurt. Mm-hmm. By November 1st of 17, they did it again. They did nothing. I got killed, and they painted in the race. So now they, <coughs> the company now has a track record of knowing when they do, do nothing, it hurts me. And if you're wanting to take me out of the picture, what better way to do it than ignore what was really said? Mm. Um, and so um, you are, But you are saying, just for the record, that you never uh, said that you would lower employees' hours. No, I did wow. not say that. There's a, here's the beautiful thing is the— there's a tape from Edison College on that speech, which is, you can get that tape. If you want to see it, I'll send it to, to you and Ela. The transcript, 2017, is a transcript. There's a tape, and there's a tape on the laundry service. So there's a tape on all three comments, and none of the comments are indicative of what was reported by the media. And Papa John's did nothing to clear the record. Now, hmm. um, is that good? Well, it's turned out to be a disaster. Mm-hmm. So if you take the position, we're going to get rid of the... A founder, and we're going to violate the duty of care and the duty of loyalty, and we're going to throw him on the bu- under the bus for something he didn't say. Probably not legal, probably not cool, but they're making a bet that the company would be better without me. Right. It's turned out to be a disaster. The company's <clears throat> in trouble. The franchisee's in trouble. So not only did they violate the law, not only did they do something that was borderline evil, they've hurt a lot of people along the way. What would you say to, I I imagine what they would say in response to that is that the company was already on the decline because of your actions. I would say that the company was on the decline because they didn't uh, correct the record and they let what was mischaracterized carried on and they further embellished it. Remember Mm -hmm. the two people in in charge of PR that were supposed to protect me deserted me in in the middle of, uh, now I've made these people multimillionaires, not one executive. Now, one board member is called and said, how you doing? Mm. Yeah, you Probably know, ordered not to communicate with you. I don't know what it is, but can you imagine a founder building 5,000 doors out of a broom closet <clears throat> and, and having something mischaracterized? They were your family. They had them over the house at Christmas. You yeah. took them on trips. And they don't even call to check out how you're doing. Now, there's some people that are... Feels you know, bad. They're pretty sad. That's pretty sad. That yeah, feels I feel, really bad. Yeah, I, I feel sorry for people that... I mean, when you build a 5,000 store chain out of a broom closet... And you make all these people multimillionaires and, you know, you have something like this happen that's untruthful and not fair. And now it's not right in the sense that that's not my character. That's not my moral fiber. And yet they don't pick up the phone and say, hey, we, there's a disagreement here. But how you doing? Mm-hmm. You know, how's your family? Personal doing? resentment, it yeah. sounds like. Yeah. You expected more from these people. Who how do you? People that, oh, can you hold your thought? Yeah. People that you think are put together, you know, oh, these are leaders of the community. They ain't put together very well. Mm. You know, they're not put together the way they pretend to be put together. Um, you know, the corporate geniuses, please. <laughs> Do you have trouble trusting people now? No, but no. you get better at it. You're more guarded. You're more, you're more, you are, you have to be. You have to be more retreated now and guarded of who you speak to yeah. and who you associate with. You know, There's got to be trauma there. Yeah. PTSD. Yeah. Potentially. The remember that you have to look at things of what did I do wrong? What could I have done better? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and um, a couple things. One is thirty one percent didn't hold the day. It just would. So I should have. You own thirty one percent. I own thirty one percent. You thought that would be enough. I thought it'd be. How fun. did it end up not being enough? Because what happened? The, the, that thirty one wasn't enough to carry another twenty percent against what, what the backlash on the N word. So everybody, all the other owners colluded. To, for a communi- cumulative 51% to oust you. The board, it's worse than that. The board colluded with the media to make the N word worse than it was and then went to the other owners and said, We have a bad apple in John. That's kind of mm-hmm. how they did that. The second thing is, is remember, uh, I knew this something like this could happen, but not from people around me that I cared about because it wasn't in their best interest to do this. Right. To your point, the, the lesson there is you have to have a you have to have your guard up a little better. But I missed the boat on those two aspects, and I lost my company. And the company now is in trouble. Well, I was going to ask, you know, in summary, looking over the, the story as it is, you've got these three big uh, media controversies dating back. The first time I heard you in the news in that regard was 2012 with the Affairable Court, Care Act, which, according to you, was misreported. Um, 
what's the story in all of this for you? What do you take away from this whole, from this whole experience you've built it up in 2012, and then in the past couple of years again two more controversies with the kneeling, and then that phone call where you said the N word. Like, what's the, what do we? I mean, what's what? How do you? What's the story? You know, what's the lesson for you? I, I think the 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 lesson is you always go through things like this. <clears throat> and you come out the side, other side, a better person. Mm. Um, and this this makes you stronger and, and better, and it makes you more appreciative of the people that do good and uh, do have a good good soul. Um, the we had a really good thing going. It was making 150 million bucks a year, and we had the best pizza and best service, and everybody's making a lot of money. Um, so that uh, that introduces an element of being comfortable. And sometimes when you're comfortable, you don't, um, you know, you don't prune the bad parts of yourself as much as you should. Whereas if you go through something like this, it forces you to be a better person mm-hmm. in every way. And um, I could have never sold eight million shares of stock when I, in the position I was a CEO because it would have scared everybody else to death. Mm. These folks have come in, they've created a mirage, they've created a farce, they've bumped the stock up to 65, and I've been able to sell 7, 8 million so that's shares. that's kind of a nice thing. It's a you. real nice thing, because I never would have been able to sell uh, 7, 8 million shares that's without... That's silver just... lining. <laughs> exactly. So you cashed out a little bit where, right. before you couldn't. Right. Plus now I get Let me to... do the math. What'd you sell? How many shares do you sell? <laughs> Let's say 8 mil. 8 million shares, my God. And at what, and at what value? <laughs> Let's just do 50 for math. It's 400 mil. Ooh! <laughs> so you cashed out 400 million? And how, how do you feel? I told you I'd be okay. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, but, Whoa. But look so what, wait, look, what, look. how does that work? Who pay, so the company pays you $400 million? Uh, people that buy in the stock pay the 400 And then million. this guy is coming in and saving the company with how much? 250. 250 mil. And you fuck, but you just sucked out 400 million. Let's see who's right. <laughs> oh, shit. Somebody's, again, he's got this thing sold in the next. But 50. what did they expect? They knew you were going to sell your stock. You'd be kind of, be silly of you not to sell Well, some. here's what I was hoping. I was hoping they could run it better than I could run it. <laughs> I really was. I mean, I yeah, was Yeah, you're like, let's see. Uh, let's see. I mean, because yeah. you, you think maybe you don't know as much. You're like, hey, maybe they're right. Maybe they're right. And yeah. so if we're clocking along here at 3 or 4%, uh, comps and we're making good pizza and culture and everybody's getting raises. I'm like, well, it's not how I would have done it, but good yeah. for them. But that's not what's happened. You know, we're closing stores. Um, I went down to my hometown store in um, Park City yesterday to get it, uh, the Papadias. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> really, Papa Zones, but Papadias, okay. And the store's closed. Oh, no. I had to drive all the way to Salt Lake. Um, mm. But uh, closing stores, people losing their jobs, and so I can't be part of that, and I don't want to be part of it. But the silver lining is now I'm involved with some some health things. Um, I love people. I love pizza, um, and we found some things that really can help people's health, make mm-hmm. people feel better emotionally, spiritually, and intellectually and physically. That turns me on. Um, yeah, you got four hundred million dollars in the bank. You could do whatever the hell you want. Damn, that's pizza's wor- been good to pop up. Yeah, it's been a blessing from God. Told you. We Are you a religious re- man? Not religious, but oh. there's definitely a higher power. Oh, for sure. There's, there's the I was just power. wondering if faith has been had played a role in your life at all or helped you through this. <laughs> if, yeah, when you've had your teeth kicked in like this, it puts you on your knees pretty quickly, which is a good thing. Mm. It makes, you know, makes Humble. You, oh my gosh. I mean, you, um, you know, when you get your noggin knocked around like this on something you really didn't say or do, you, you get, you know, I was always spiritual anyway because I never understood how the speed of light is 186,000 miles a second. Mm-hmm. You know, Mother Nature. I mean, I just find all that like mm-hmm. way above my intellectual pay oh, grade. Yeah. yeah. Um, but <laughs> this will this will make you, you know, this will make you humble in a lot of ways. So, have you heard the term that our us and our fans use a lot? Papa bless. Papa bless. Yeah. You hear that all like, the time. Did you hear it before we reached out or connect got connected? I heard it, but I didn't know what it meant. Yeah. <laughs> It's just a weird thing. <laughs> I really don't even know how it started, but it's so prolific now. Everybody says Papa Bless, which is a reference to you, of course. <laughs> so we've all been praying for you, um, Thank you. this whole time, all these years. <laughs> well, it worked. It, I guess it did it in the worked. end. I mean, we got Rocco's. Um, Rocco's we is got coming up. Another couple how much, how I, got another, I got another couple of pizza places I'm working on. I can't wait to share with you. It's fun. It, and then we got this health thing going mm-hmm. on. It, how many stocks? How many shares do you have left in Papa John? Two mil. Three mil. Damn, you are a very wealthy man. 
Jesus, Papa. <laughs> well, we took we took the company over and wait. Are you a billionaire? Does that make you a no, billionaire? I'm not a billionaire. <laughs> that makes you close. <laughs> Uh, closer to a billion than 500 million, but, um, <clears throat> wow. uh, that's an uh, exclusive club. <laughs> it's a blessing. Um, and you can do so much good with those resources and I plan on doing that. Um, but we're having fun with people's health and we're having fun with independent pizzerias. <laughs> we're out to find a it's better not- pizza and we're out to find a better way to go through life to help so other people. Why don't you sell the rest of your stock? What's holding on to it? Well, you, you, there's laws. Oh, yeah. So you can only do so much at a time. Mm-hmm. So you would offload all of it and just move on if you could. I don't know if I would do that. I can't really say that because I, I don't know if that what, that what that would do to the stock if I said that. Because it, it sounds like you're saying here that you're suggesting in, a, in, in an indirect way that people should sell their stock. What I'm suggesting is everything I did <clears throat> from 09. Bring out the 10 point, baby. To 17 to take the stock from 650 share to $89. Every single fundamental thing we did on our principles, our values, our people, uh, our interpersonal relationships. The principles are gone. They're violating. And also the company is in financial, it's being floated by this investment. So it sounds like they've artificially uh, inflated the price of the stock. I mean, now's the time to get out if you got Papa John's stock, it sounds like. Yeah, the two metaphors that I've used is even if you love the car, you don't need to be in the car when the car crashes. Right. And the other one is, in my opinion... Uh, the ship has already hit the iceberg. Mm. And it's already lisping, but they got a camera that makes it look like it's level. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a farce. <laughs> well, let's see what happens. It's got to break your heart. And by the way, I hope I'm wrong. Yeah. I ho- well, I hey, hope you've I- got a lot of money invested yeah, in that I've, company. I hope that so for, two years, shares. for two years, and I've been ranting and raving and telling them, you know, that this is a losing proposition, and they're probably tired of me telling that, but <laughs> for two years, I've, I've hoped I was wrong. You still have $100 million in that company in stock value at $50. At sixty-five bucks is a little more. Oh, sixty-five. Let me recalculate. Excuse me. <laughs> it's one thirty, but keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Do you watch, or have you ever watched something like Kitchen Nightmares with I'm Gordon not. Ramsay? No. Oh, you don't watch that? Mm-hmm. It's good shit. Check you it out. It. Yeah. <laughs> good shit. You watch TV? You watch food shows? Most mostly sports. Sports uh, guy. You're a sports guy. That must have been a real honor for you to get involved with that NFL like a dream. Yeah, that was lucky. Because I saw yeah, you lucky. with those. With those players, all smiles, and you're all on the field and doing all that. I mean, that must have been amazing. Yeah, Peyton was great. Montana was great. Um, but now Marina that... was great. I mean, J.J. Uh, Watt was great. We had a lot of fun with all Jerry Jones, mm. the bus, Jerome. He was great. Mm. Um, you know, uh, Shaq's been great. Yeah, Papa Shaq. Mm. Papa Shaq. I wanted to ask you about Papa <laughs> yeah, Shaq. Yeah. yeah, we're not Shaq. You must have been I... a fan of Shaq. Well, everybody's a fan. Yeah, everyone loved Shaq. Yeah. yeah, we just got to figure out what number he's going to wear. Thirty-four, thirty-six, or you know, but but so no. was the Shaq deal facilitated? Uh, that was after you were ousted, right? Yeah, I had nothing. So to is that a shame deal. that you're like, damn, I like Shaq. I wish we could hang out. Absolutely. I mean, you ever talked to him? No, I've never talked to Shaq. Oh. I'm, a, I'm a big Shaq fan. Hmm. Shaq sits on the board, but um, wow, <clears throat> I'm not as close to Shaq as I was Peyton. Right. Or uh, Joe. you talk to? Do you talk to them? I, I talked to um, Peyton you know, and those guys on a need to know basis until I get this controversy resolved mm. because I can't, it's a liability, I, I, for, them. It's a liability for them. And I can't yeah. put them in that position. Nice. Right? And I haven't. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Wow. What a complicated life you live. It's a shame you never got to serve on the board the same time as Shaq. <laughs> right. <laughs> that would have been interesting. Yeah. I, Although, Sha- Shaq, here's where Shaq and I agree, um, with Papa John's. He wants to use his voice. Mm-hmm. And the guys at Arby's want to use a different voice like they did at Arby's. I think they should use Shaq's voice. Mm-hmm. I really do. I mean, if you're going to, he's going to be your spokesperson. Yeah. The second yeah. thing is they only use him 10, 15 percent of the ads. That's weird. Shaq. Uh, it's real right. weird. Did you, it's really weird. Shaq, get him in there. If you already I, if got if he's him. He's the spokesperson. Put him yeah, in there 100 percent of right. the time and use his voice. But I agree with Shaq on those two, uh, those two issues. Mm. But thank you all for having me. Thank you Thank so you much. for coming. It was a joy. Yeah. It was a pleasure. Mm-hmm. It was a marathon. We went for a while. You know how long we went? No. Two and a half hours. Oh, okay. wow. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't think we you, you laughed me. at me. <laughs> well, let's see. You might owe me. I'll be back. Yeah? I'll be back. As the uh f- as the CEO and founder of the world of the newest and biggest pizza chain, Rocco's. Mama bless. <laughs> Mama bless. Mama bless. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you, uh, Papa John. It's been a privilege, it's been an honor, it's been a dream fulfilled, come to fruition. Eight years. Eight years in the making, baby. <laughs> Eight years. Love Thank it. you. Thank, Thank you years. so much, guys. Guys, we'll see you on Wednesday with uh, PewDiePie. So we'll see you then. 
or well on Thursday. But anyway, guys, have a great uh, God. Have a Papa bless. Papa bless.